What's up, everybody? When we went looking for sponsorship money, we wanted to keep it in the family. We we're very lucky to find Sam Triple B, who was very kind enough to extend a 10% discount at the Triple B web store, which is located at triplebrecords.limitedrun.com. Uh, you get that 10% discount off of anything in the web store by entering the code X to grind, one word. Uh, I suggest the candy 7-inch or any of the self-defense material. I don't know if the 7-inch is still in print, but the the uh, are still impressed, but the uh, the LP is probably still there and it's hot. It's a little weird for some of you, but uh, definitely that candy 7-inch would be my pick. And I like the intellectual lion shirt. Uh, one worth checking out. Uh, remember that's triple B records dot limited run dot com. It's 10% off. Enter the code X to grind. That's a T O not a, not a number two, not a numeral two. Anyway, show's about to start. Uh, thanks again to triple B. Uh, feel grateful that we didn't have to go with stamps.com or something like that. Welcome to Axe to Grind, the premier hardcore podcast. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Patrick. I'm Bob. And I'm Tom. And no guest today. We're going to do a kind of like like endless quick hits, would you say? And, a medley. And, f- and from what we see, these are the episodes you all like the most, so that's cool. Yeah. yeah no, no, sh- no shade on our guests who are always uh, uh, gracious with their time, but apparently you just love us. Much appreciated guests. <laughs> so... Uh, for those of you that are new here, uh, Axe to Grind is a podcast that talks about hardcore music and hard- hardcore culture bullshit and hardcore fuckery and whatever. And the format is such. We uh, have been around for a long minute in different capacities and developed beefs, biases, etc. When we encounter one, we announce it by saying, I got an Axe to Grind. And uh, that way you know how to contextualize that grievance or, or, or criticism. Uh you want to jump into some quick hits? Everybody's at United Blood right now, so uh, or Damage City or yeah. Damage City. That's correct. literally so. They're yeah, all, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, everyone seemingly is was at that Turnstile show, which had uh, an audience of ten trillion. It might have been like the full Eastern Seaboard. It, at, that was a lot of human beings. It was awesome. Can it, I point something out? Yes. So there was that show. United Blood had their pre-show, which was headlined by Naysayer, Primal Rights playing, The right. Flex which had an after show of candy striking distance count me out. Now you then go down the road. So we just went from DC to Richmond and you go from Richmond to Virginia beach. Cro-Mags down to nothing enforced paper dead trail. He- paper trail. Yeah. Wild. How many fucking, like, it's, it's like lot, literally everyone around. That's a lot of hardcore. That a is. lot of hardcore. And all the shows all apparently did crazy. And I heard bar fight played Richmond. So, yes. The, yes. So I, I've got one report. Who else played with bar fight? It was Candy, striking Bar Fight, distance. Striking Distance, Count Me Out. Okay. Uh, our embedded reporter, Ivy, <laughs> on uh, the scene, uh, said that uh, it, the show was very fun, uh, enjoyed everybody kind of uh, pulling their collar up to hide their straight edge uh, uh, collar rockers uh, <laughs> as they drank at the bar. Uh, <laughs> and, and I got a different feedback on the show was that... Um, there were a few young people there, 
And by there were a few, I mean, no, literally, there were mostly older people there for Count Me Out, Striking Distance. And it's a shame because, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, those are bands I came up on when sure. I was young. And apparently it was a lot of a lot of people in their mid thirties, mid thirties, being really excited, and a lot of the young guys were kind of like, "Ah, it's all right." Do you think they'll catch them at the fest? And it's like, if I'm a forty year old, do I pay twenty bucks to see them? <laughs> well, you know, and go home, or right. do I put up with the like go, try to deal with the fest? I think of- a bit about that because the word had gotten out on the pre the after show it was announced much later but i think uh i don't know i I just i also think that that era of hardcore isn't something that a lot of people are going back to right now in this moment sure i I think bar fight in particular no disrespect to them but that is that is for the old heads that's for the richmond townies that's for the people that have been around and it was always kind of like right if not and and kind of a fake mythos which means there was a mythos that only extended to city limits. Now everybody heard about it, but and that's no diss. Bar fight was no. kind of striking no distance was bigger. Oh, way bigger. So I mean, I'm just like Dave Bird is in both bands, right? Doesn't he sing for Bar fight? Did I, I make he, that up? Well, Bar fight had like eight singers. Okay, well, he was he one of the uh, eight? Yeah, I thought he, yeah, was. he was. Yeah. Okay. Did he sing both sets? I, I wouldn't be surprised if he sang in some form in the that's bar fight thing, impressive. but I don't know. He definitely sang for striking distance. So did Timmy sing for anybody? Don't know. Don't say. Didn't say. Weird. Okay. That'd be cool. Yeah. The the reportage on this one is spotty. It's it was just Ivy saying, "I'm hanging at the bar. This is fun. I'm old. <laughs> I'm old. She thinks she's old. It's kind of wild. Wow. I was like, Yo, if you're old, I'm decrepit. I oh, turned yeah, I yeah. turned to dust a long time. I'm ago. actually dead. But uh, let's talk about that turnstile show though. The photos from that iconic already. Yes. 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 Really, I, I saw some video that impressed me so much. Like. A couple uh, episodes ago, I went on about how uh, I like the corny shit now. I like the push pit. I like the f- fucking uh, stage dive into crowd surf. Like, I like all <laughs> that shit. That's uh, Turnstile in, in their crossover into a larger world has now gotten that kid. And God bless. It looked fun as fuck. Yeah, people are actually like responding to the music and not with a choreographed yes. thing. It was like, I want to jump to this. I, I like, mean, that's cool. There was some pogoing going on. Right. And, like, and not like punk pogoing. No. Just kind of like, I am overtaken. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, and that's something I church. said, uh, are, are my, you know, the birds on the ground there said, show was awesome. A lot of fun. Yes. Part of it felt like a DC art student show. But to me, that's cool. And I think it cements, like, we talk about who's biggest, who's most popular. Turnstile is the reigning champion of most fun band. Absolutely. And they draw probably the most varied uh, crowd in hardcore. Yeah. I think they've worked hard to do that. For sure. They've definitely worked to make that real. I mean, and just even, like, in social media stuff, I'm always impressed. Like, when I'm sitting at my desk at work and I can see, I was like, oh, shit, like, Abuse of Power is playing right now. It's... 5.30 or whatever it is and they're getting a bonkers reaction I'm like cool I'm still at work (laughs) like that's awesome like or even today like it's like people were talking about uh, downfall I guess they open United Blood like 250 you know I'm still like I'm finishing up lunch and people are like downfall is going to be the next big thing in hardcore like it's like yeah. It's fucking awesome. Like I, to me I always assume like oh man Friday at like 4 o'clock who's going to be there apparently everyone yeah, I mean, I've only been awake for a couple hours at that I point, respect. and I'm yeah. thinking, no, I don't want anything to this do with This is when that. you have to come to the group chat with 50 texts. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Um, to me, what's really exciting, just given right now, is the last few years, it's kind of been like, who's going to be the next middle class of bands? Who's going to be the next up and coming? And I feel like there was a two-year window where we saw a lot of band camp demo, and then it was it, no, no movement. But I think we've got a crop of young, new bands who are going to be moving up, doing records, and working, and kind of move into that next section. Like it makes me want to do a label. So uh, if somebody wants to uh, get on the back end, let's let's figure this out because I have all the knowledge, I just, just need not the silent, pockets. You got the A and R guy. <laughs> yeah, let's figure this out. Uh, the th- we're, I would like to talk at some point about the conversation that's going on about. Uh, the need for sing-along bands and hardcore, and we can transition from talking about Turnstile uh, into that larger talk, but let's continue with a couple quick hits. Uh, I just, this is not relevant to anybody in this room, nor maybe a lot of our listeners. There's a new Bleeding Through song. Uh, I've revisited this band in a way that I don't think most people have. (laughs) It's not good. That said... Ever? 
I, you know what? People really tried hard to sell me on the early stuff. Like 2002, you weren't like, this Oh, no, cool. I, was, I was never game. I liked the goofy throwdown stuff more than the serious bleeding through oh, stuff. That's where we split. Yeah. Oh, we'll okay, so yeah. what is the bleeding st- through stuff that you do mess with? I mean, it's it's like one of those things like you tour the band, you see them every night. You're like, this is cool. Yeah. We toured with them with Hope Con. I was like, this is cool. They were nice dudes, like really nice. I mean, seemed like sweetheart dudes, seemed the- like... You know, I, I'm with sure. all that. There was but, a record on Indecision that was good. Uh, yeah. May, <clears throat> I forget what exactly it was. Maybe Portrait of the Goddess? Or yes. That up? Okay. I thought it was Return of the Goddess, so thank no. you. Maybe that new record is called Return of the Goddess. I mean, <laughs> it, they really are in a familiar space, so it would not surprise me. And you they, said it sounds like they just picked up right where they left off. Yeah, I mean. Is that good or bad? So I think, look, I'm gonna, I'm going to say something that... Uh, Bleeding through dudes, I like Orange County. Don't make it hard for me to go there. I mean, Chipetti's a big fucking dude. I mean, all these guys could whoop my ass. I don't even want to get into it. I just, but just speaking truth right now. Keyboard player might fuck you up too. I mean, everybody in the band. I kind of had a crush on Marta. Yeah. I I I like Molly. She was the original one. Original keyboard player. Both of them could beat me up. So I don't want any problems in Orange County. So it's just so we're clear. Now, that said, this is mosh metal through and through right at the end it became glossy mosh metal it became big sounding mosh metal but it's always been mosh metal and i have a weakness for that sort of stuff i can i can be game for it they never appealed to me continue not to however this new song like you said it is so much what they are and i don't know if that's good or bad i think that probably it's full indifference from the plan like okay i'm gonna be the one to say it uh, 18 Visions was supposedly going to be an ongoing concern when they got back together. <laughs> Crickets. Crickets. And there was the initial excitement and then sure. not a lot of excitement. That could- like like it was they were doing better two years ago before they got back together when people were just bootlegging their shirts. Correct. And people were just talking about them on merch, merch swap. You know what I mean? But like sure. that doesn't mean they don't have fans. 18 Visions, don't make my life hard. It, it, it doesn't mean that they don't have fans. Uh, and it doesn't mean that I think they're playing uh, This Is Hardcore. Is that possible? Yeah, we got to talk yeah, about that so. a little bit. Okay. Sure. So uh, it doesn't mean that they couldn't impress hella people on that and, and you know, get Turn eyes. Turn over a new leaf. And just sure. Think, yeah. All the bullshit, whatever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> sure. The f- point is, is that it was loud before the record came out. People stand by the record, say that it is good if you are an 18 Visions fan, and yet... Eh, it didn't really... Yeah. It, it didn't go... You know, I think Bleeding Through is in for a similar... S- similar thing. Okay. And do you think there was less rumblings for a Bleeding Through song now than there might have been for an 18 Vision song a year ago? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to be honest. In uh, At least in the circles I have contact right. with, not a single living human being has asked for a uh, Bleeding Through uh, new track. But in their defense, of that ilk, they were one of the bigger bands. For sure. Sold like hundreds of thousands of records. Is- did Bleeding Through get totally lost when it came down to this new wave of metalcore revival? I don't know. I mean, I feel like they started from a higher perch than, like, say, Martyr. Mm-hmm. But I feel like more people like Martyr right now, yes. if I had to guess. Yes. No. I don't know. I'm also not no, 22 and, you know, but, like, uh, look, I don't know. I think you saying that is the way that I say, well, who could, Who knows? Yeah. They could pick up steam. Sure. They could. We're both being diplomatic. It, it's, it's a natural fact that they did get passed over. Uh, at sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes for your legacy, it's more valuable to be the small band. You know what yes, I mean? Yes, right. 100%. Right? 100%. It's true, too. So uh, to They're me, on a big label right now. I think they're on... It, I mean, Rise would be the fit, right? I forget what it was called. Like Sharp Tone? Oh, Sharp Tone. Sure. I it's think, like some like vanity label that? for like the Attila guy or something. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Or something along those lines. Something, something along those yeah. lines. Right. Like there's um, money behind it, whatever I mean, it is. None of, the, none of 18 Visions or Bleeding Through matters to me at all or any circle of mine other than... Other than me being like, man, Marta's pretty cute, and you know, what, take that as you will. As you know, I was twenties. Um, what is mosh metal? Uh, mosh metal is to some people, it is uh, the dumbed. And look, this is not me defending. <laughs> this is not me defending any mosh metal as smart. But there was a, there. We hit a, a point where it became very intentionally dumb, and to some people, that's all it will ever be, right? Like, is sure. is they that, took like hate breed and like it, gave it a lobotomy? Yes, and, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that model is what it is to some people. To me, it's the stuff that is perhaps not complex enough to be metalcore, or perhaps uh, 
leaning towards a more breakdown focus, less uh, Swedish influence, uh, sort of uh, post hate breed sort of sound. Like strictly for mosh. Strictly for mosh. No other reason. Strictly for the mosh. Lyrics could be simlish. They could be, sure. I, and that's not to say that. Like, well, and, and not that, to say that there's not. exceptions because I think. I mean, Hate Breed wrote some great lyrics, and yeah. I think, and I, you made the point. Um, I don't know some episode before now um, <laughs> about uh, what the petition in the Empty Sky being mosh metal too. It is, and I'm willing to bet, bet Jake didn't just throw down some like. No, he he. Fuck he, it. Kill mosh. <laughs> you wouldn't understand Tell it. Him. I mean, you probably wouldn't understand what he was saying anyway. Because I still don't. Correct. But yeah. So. Uh, no, it could be smart. It could be dumb. I would love to be in a mosh metal band. I grew up on that stuff. I think it's fun as hell. I I really like it. But so like, so mosh metal, we did that. Who would you say? Like if someone's like definition, like like I open up an encyclopedia, I look up mosh metal. Who whose face should be next to mosh metal? I mean, I think a lot of people are going to say something like "Bury Your Dead" because that's where it went. You know what I mean? That's where it went, and that's what a lot of people ID as it. Yeah. Uh, but but to me. I, like I said in a previous episode, I think I honestly think that that uh, Norma Jean record is the pinnacle of mosh metal. Oh yeah, you did say and, that. Okay. And and a lot of people are going to be like, no, if we're if we're talking about music like uh, Bury Your Dead, then what about you know On Broken Wings or uh, the other one, uh, uh, Blood, Sup- whatever the fuck. So yes, uh, <laughs> this one. So, so but not blood has been shed. They're no, not mosh no. metal. They're tech. No, blood has been shed. I think you could consider a mosh metal band. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're too tech for that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, you know what? You can be a little tech as long as you got enough dumb. I, yeah, I don't think Marshmallow excludes tech. I think it's inclusive of. Okay. I thought they were too tech and like not dumb enough. No, nah, I'd say... if we're, they, Yeah, we're coming across as... Yeah, for, real nerds. But we're going to get yeah. through to, to doing the full definitions of new school hardcore versus mosh metal versus metalcore. I, we're going to do... We're going to dole it out in small doses so I can do it without just scrolling at pictures of Marta. So. Yeah. And we're going to partner with, uh, hopefully, with a friend of ours, Fanzine. Yeah, numerality zine out of Chicago, Shout and we're going out. to do a mini zine of all our language. It'll be you know little, something you can play along with. A little jargon, yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe so we'll do a crossword puzzle. <laughs> maybe a find the words. <laughs> you know, it'll just be like random shit, and like, I like you have idea. to find turnstile. In I here. like that idea. Yeah. Yes, great idea. So, uh, point is, bleeding through. This could be my lens, possibly because I was never a fan. But I think that we might be in for another eighteen visions where. Uh, even if the fans of the particular thing stand by the release, it just doesn't go any broader than that. But, yeah. you, but you're absolutely correct. Bleeding Through had a ton of fans, so maybe, you know. I mean, I feel like you can fall, but even if you fall a little bit, you yeah. still, it's a lot of people to land on. I mean, that would be my guess. If, if we're going to be really uncharitable, yeah. we could think that their band or that their fans have all gone on to be like, regional reps for for monster energy drink sales or like you know like our motocross <laughs> promoters or, or whatever the fuck it is like if that's that would be us being a little unkind but i think that it can be a danger and we're going to talk about this when we get to uh, uh perhaps some this is hardcore talk your window for coming back depending on the type of act you are can be really narrow it, yeah, can, it can be it, a year or two yeah it, it can be absolutely yeah so uh, but anyway, wanted to talk on a ble- new bleeding through because it is so much just what it is. And right. but I mean, they, they didn't break up that long ago. I mean, I mean, if they came out with like a trip hop album, you'd be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Right, right, right. So like, I don't know if this is like, oh well, at least you stayed t- true to what you did before. I mean, it's it, also we should talk about this uh, as a larger topic. Hard to come back with a new sound. Period. You know what I mean? Right. So like, but like, I was just shocked that it's like, oh, like these dudes are leaning into what they've always been, and I guess that's the thing that you do when you come back. I just still don't like it. Uh, that's fair. Uh, okay, let's very briefly talk about Bodied Girl. Okay, so um, don't be mean. Me? Yeah. Are you fucking no. kidding me? No, I'm, I'm just saying in general. He's saying in oh, general. He's yeah. saying he's speaking to the audience. Um, yeah, not to you guys. You Tom, guys would be mean. I'm like becoming like a parent where I like I don't have any kids, but I saw this. Uh, look, we we did, we went around the room before and said, "How old is this girl? Uh, max age, 19 tops." Yeah, you know. I think that uh, there is references that are funny. Like if you changed your screen name to bodied, that's a funny thing to do for two days. Right. The the, the disembodied thing that was just funny. a disembodied cover and it just said bodied with her face on it. Funny. Funny. She would probably think it was funny. Correct. The photos of Mike Body, singer of Blind Justice. As saying, bodied. You bo- got bodied. You've your been parents got bodied. bodied. Yes. Great. Funny. 
Uh, I laughed. I, me too. I, all that shit is fun. And what's unfortunate is when I say, but you people know what, when it goes past fun, some of you dumb motherfuckers don't. don't. Sure. And, and it's really unfortunate. Like, Look, I, I get that some of you are also 19. You see yourself as this person's peer, and therefore it's okay for you to rip into them in some sort of way. I'm older than that. I don't think it's fun. I don't think it's cool. Right. Uh, We've it, seen this offline, and we saw how it ended. Yeah. Now imagine it being amplified by a million. Right. And, you know and I mean? people do embarrassing things. It's fun to It's fun to poke it. It's not fun to stab it. Don't be that person that takes the, the, that takes the, the like, internet joke justice too far you know what i mean right because i mean do we even know what the background is maybe like whoever's getting bodied maybe deserves to get bodied i mean to be totally frank i saw it i giggled like a mad yeah, man absolutely but the whole time i was like well good luck to the, good luck to that girl that's out there about to get bodied i was like, yeah because someone's catching one someone's was, catching a hot one i don't know who it is but someone is but yeah. you know look we're we're nobody. Well, Bob is somebody's parents, but we're but, 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 but we're, we're nobody's dads in this room. Except I love for those you, Easton. That, yeah, except for except for Easton. I mean, some well, people might call us daddies. Yeah, that's, that's you true. are you know a pure daddy with that beard. True. But, you know, my point is, I'm not here to police your behavior. It just being. It, look, what did Ray say? Even in the scene when it was cool to be mean, we we went the other way. <laughs> Well, all right, so we I think went also, the other way. So just walk away from being mean, everybody. You We're know all a bunch of fucking weird freaks. That's right. Don't pick on someone exactly. who's a little freakier at that one moment. Exactly. We're all a bunch of weirdos. Yeah. You wouldn't be into this if you weren't. Exactly. And you caught a little bit of it with when we talked about Rick to life and like, you know what? That dude's actually provoked a lot worse. So fuck that dude. But at the same time, we're here being compassionate and going, yeah, you know what though? Like... Uh, treat all human beings with a little respect and let people have that embarrassing moment. We're not saying don't laugh because we all laughed. But then realize when the line is stopped and go and say, all right, right. have I'm, a nice day. I'm, Let's move on. There's some really funny videos online today. Pat too. posts videos of his goatee yeah. and calls himself a villain. We well, didn't make it go viral. Here's the thing, though. But it's okay. Like, as... I'm going to say something fucked up because that person is 19 years old. A lot of parts of the world, they'd have two kids. Uh, even in the United States, she might be supporting a family. I have no idea. Yeah. That's an adult to a lot of people. But I will say that the fact that she's 19. Or younger. We're or guessing younger, on her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like, she could be 40. Who the fuck exactly. knows? Yeah, 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 whatever. Just, uh, if she's 40, congrats. Your skin's looking fine. Yeah, for well, look at you. Yeah, are you yeah. seriously uh, doing well? But the point is that I'm not sensitive. You know what I mean? Like I'm. I think that we are too delicate with people now, right? Like okay. I, it's unrelatable to me. I think that some people should get fucking kind of picked on a little bit, uh, and I think that we are too hands off with certain things. That said, I just don't. I just think there's like a very clear line where you are enjoying the enjoying the joke. And then there's that step where you are being a dickhead. That is the point of yeah. the sensitivity. Is that Everybody probably should get poked. It's just on that fourth poke where you're like, yo, motherfucker, now you're hurting my rib. Right. Yeah, you, you know, you, and that's where is that the like idea of anti bullying and all this is as much about the quote victim as it is the bully because people don't know those lines. And it's like, you know, I, I really, you know, we all, we all poke at each other. Yeah. But know when it goes beyond and most people don't. And that's the sad part is that this joke is funny. This bodied thing, certainly I laughed at the video. But then once it starts to get to that cruel spot or it's prolonged, you see it and it really fucks people up and it really hurts people. And, you know, did this girl deserve a little bit of ribbing for making that video? Absolutely, it's fuck yes. But right, there's a line, friends. and now we're now we're now we're past it, and yep. let's 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 everyone move on, and right. then use this as a learning moment where it's like, oh, okay, yes, that was funny, and then we moved on, and it's like, oh, you made that stupid video when you were 19. That's crazy. Oh, I laughed at that. How you doing? Yo, I, yeah. I got a DM from a, a friend who got in trouble when she was 17, and is still paying for it, and I couldn't fucking believe that. Like she is in a situation in her life because of something that she did over 10 years ago. Right. And I cannot fathom being in that situation. The school Not, loans? What's that? School loans? No. <laughs> I mean, because, I, can fa yes. I can fathom right. that Yeah, we, we got it. We all got it. 
No. We got enough school loans in this room to uh, I could we to could buy, buy a, a yacht. Mansion. I could buy the Trustkill Mansion yeah. with the amount of money that we owe in this fucking place. True. C- careful, that's the Trustkill Mansion. So, so uh, I own like a step in that or something. That, that's true. Yeah, Maybe a fucking faucet, like a veranda. Something. Yeah, something. A, a supreme brick. So, so that, yeah, a brick. So, uh, but I, I'm this internet era of everything being online forever kind of means that everything becomes passe quickly. So it's totally possible that we forget things and things just move on. But I do just want to say, having recently talked to somebody who is still being impacted by something dumb that they did when they were 17, that's not right. I don't give a fuck what it was. She could have stabbed somebody in the brain. It's when you are a fucking veritable child and it, right, you get a do over, and ten years have passed. Yeah, so I might, I might draw the line at brain stabbing, but you know, yeah. you know, rip a limb, we're good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, shout out to Body Girl, you're uh, welcome to do a cameo on the podcast anytime you want. You're a hero. Uh, Don't body us, please. Uh, you guys listen to new blacklisted single? No, I did, I did not. It's good. Is we're it? Gonna. I heard the second song. Was that on on the? Group chat that the second song was better than the first, or did I read that on the Twitter? Wait, we were, we were uh, that might have been something else we were listening. That might have been to? the timeline. So the uh, axe to grind timeline. I feel like someone was like, first yeah. one's cool, the second yeah. song is a banger. Uh, they're wrong. Uh, All right. f- 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 first <laughs> Sorry, song, first song is better. This is actually uh, blacklisted. Understands uh, single format, which is you. Your side A is strong. Your side B is for people that really like your band right. and find something uh, interesting in every track that you do. Okay. Uh, I somebody raised a question to me. Do you think Blacklisted is doing the singles thing on purpose? Do you think that that is uh, calculated in any way, or are they not a calculated band? I think they are a calculated band. If I had to guess, I mean, I'm talking fucking complete shit because I don't know them mm-hmm. as well as you guys do. I think they're calculated, but maybe that's all they can get done at any certain period of time. Like a 12 song LP is a is an undertaking for any band, full time or not. These dudes are not all in the same city all the sort of stuff maybe like in two by chunk maybe they record three songs they pick the two best ones and that's what you get because i don't know I, i've gone on record a few times as say, i'm like an advocate for a singles career i think you can be a singles band in 2018 in a way that you haven't been able to for 20 years and i you i think headline festivals doing it that's true and and i think that that shit is cool for the bands that that uh choose to operate that way and I just like it because I'm getting really good blacklisted material. Well, so, I mean, uh, what Tom said is 100% true. Yeah. And it might just be the perspective of how you look at it in terms of <clears throat> everything we're talking about. It's not It's not easy to write good songs, period. Let's just say that. you, you got to be talented or creative. It's not impossible, though. You know what I mean? Tons of bands do it. But what's a lot harder than writing good singles is writing a good LP. And yeah. I am speculating but i believe what tom said was 100 percent true and that they collectively also look at writing a full length a lot differently than they look at writing a single which i think is pretty right as yeah. do, you know what i mean right like oh we got this one really cool song and this other song yeah it's kind of cool let's let's do that those two boom you don't do that with an lp you don't go oh we got this cool song and this cool right, song you have to do it five or six times to be able to get and it. Yeah. you gotta and there's like a cohesiveness when you're writing it it all kind of has to come together da, da, da. like the best albums are something that when you put it on you listen to the whole thing sure. a good record probably has four to six good songs the, the axe to grind test which <laughs> i think we need to go back to if a record has four good songs on it it's a good record yeah but a great record is when you put on and listen to the whole thing and no I think, and, and I think the dudes in Blacklist would probably look at it just like that. Okay, I think everybody should give this one a shot. If you're not into their uh, sort of uh, flights of fancy, uh, doing kind of the weirdest thing, this one is a plodding, heavy song, and really like it appealed. To give you a perspective, it appealed to a friend who dropped out of Blacklisted years ago, and his comment was, "It's heavy." It's good. You know what I mean? So right. give it a listen if you have. That'll be our homework. Before we move on, because I caught it when, Sorry. you know, listening back to our episode with Alex Casey, which we, we dubbed the United you know, Blood preview, but actually has a lot of meat on the bone. Yeah. He said people were dissing the last blacklisted full length, which is called When People Grow, People Go. That record, uh, on Pat's, Patrick's recommendation, I went back and really listened to that. That's just a great record. It's a very good record. Yeah, actually. it's really good. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe your quote, Pat, was 
if you say this isn't a hardcore record, you're a deaf dickhead. <laughs> He's correct. That's just a really good record. Yeah. And I will admit to have just kind of given it a glaze listening before. I'm like, oh, that's good. And then I went back and was like, oh, wow, this is really strong material. Yeah. And so, do you think they just didn't do enough to support it? And that's kind of why I got Honestly, I overlooked? just think the record looks... It, I don't think the it record... It looks like the Cold World record. I think it looks boring. And I don't... You know, I'm sure they had... They care about the stuff that the records look like. But I just don't think it looked dynamic. It's certainly not as dynamic as the music on it. The, Fair. I, I mean, we, I think we've talked on this. There's just also people whose aesthetic is... I, I like dull. I like... My favorite color is khaki. Yeah. And, and like... I know this from being in a band with a, my my bandmate in self defense, Alan. His actual aesthetic vibe, the thing that he likes the most, is kind of dull, and he's unrepentant about it. It's what he fucking likes, and like trying to thread the needle between his interests, as he's the guy who does most of our design, and my interest, which is, hey, let's sell a few of these, uh, can be tricky. And I think that you're probably right. That record is not a beauty queen. It is not going to win any awards. I don't think it's a bad record cover. It feels utilitarian to me. Yeah, I mean, it goes probably a lot. It's like, isn't it the kid looking out the window? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it goes with the tie. I mean, it's very... Sure. Oh, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's a little kid looking out the window. I know. And maybe if we had some context, that would actually be a good question. We should just try to find out what the context of it. Is there some connection to the photos? Is Is it it, somebody? Right. Because because that changes the way you look at it. Um, And the color is my... I mean, I'm colorblind, but it's very like drab. It's just black and white. It's black and white. Right. There you go. So It wasn't just me. So wait, (laughs) when you say you're colorblind... You can, Are we going to do this? You cannot detect color? Or? No, I can detect color. Okay. Do you, not wait, a fucking dog. Wait, hold on. Knowing <laughs> people who have color blind... <laughs> Are there colors that give you specific issues? Brown, green, red, uh-huh. purple, and blue. Is it it's hard to drive? Um, no, wait. you just know which light is which. <laughs> well, that's true. And I'm from Brooklyn and I don't drive. Yeah. Do you not have a license? No. That's so amazing. Yeah. Respect. I'm a fucking New Yorker that's through and so through. Good. That's that's legit. Like <laughs> like you should get a, once you hit across a certain age with no license, they should give you a special like gold New York ID, like yeah. New York City resident. Well, I went when I moved to Jersey, I went to go take like the tests and all that sort of stuff and they asked me if I use corrective lenses and I was like, I don't want to say this because then I might have to You're like, trying to lie? I lied. Cuz I don't always <laughs> need my glasses, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, fuck, I don't really I don't know what to do. So I was like, no, and then I took the eye test and they're like, what's that last? It's not on the wall anymore. It's like you look down in this weird yeah. fucking kaleidoscope. And I, they're like, so, you know, I read most of it. And they're like, what about the last one? I'm like, there's none there. And they're like, yes, there is. And they, they made me go to a doctor to get like real uh, eye tests done. And then I was like, fuck it. So you're over it. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I do have video. Maybe we'll post it to the, of me driving in the desert, but yelling like I'm in like uh, like on, you know, Times Square. Oh, <laughs> like, get out of the fucking road. There's nobody around. We're going to do, that you know, that's finish. that's yeah. going to be some of our Twitch Patreon. Content, there you go. Is that we're going to we're going to let you drive my car around Brooklyn just for oh, fun. God. I, we're going to have to get a lot of Patreon to cover the <laughs> accidents that I may cause. Uh, OK, so. But yes, I can see colors. OK. Was that a dumb question? No, 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 no. Because people are like, what do you like? Put it this way. I went one day to buy myself sheets. Yeah. I get up to the fucking cashier. I go, dumb question. What color are these? I thought they were blue. They were fucking lavender. Yeah. I mean, lavender's a very nice color, though. I bought them anyway. Good choice. So I was like, so if you came home and saw a dude with these, would you be? She's like, I'd be into it. I was like, all right, ring it up. All right. So thank you, Target. Sorry. Let me give one quick story. Bed Bath and Beyond. The, I treated myself. Okay. Sorry. The bl- No, because the color blindness thing, uh, you know, I have some friends with it and I've asked the same quote dumb questions, but uh, my father's best friend growing up, my uncle, John Baker, one of 21, I believe. Um, Children? Did, from, yeah, from South Boston. Wow. Uh, big Irish family. Yeah, I was going to say, um, Irish Catholics. He was uh, blind from birth. So he, li- but, you know, at, at his, he's passed now, but at his wake, one of the stories they'd said was the priest said, you know, I've known John since he was 15. The first time I saw him was when he was driving Stevie's car past the church. <laughs> Amazing. So, so because they would let him drive and they'd let him. Blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they were like, you know, he wasn't going very fast, but, 
you know, it's always fun to let him drive up dot F and uh, that. Yeah. So, anyways, shout so out to people us. with with eye problems. My my eyes will fall out of my head pretty soon, so we're good. <laughs> uh, okay, other other things we should hit on. Uh, do we want to talk for a moment? We'll probably do a deeper dive on this as hardcore. Uh, so let's just give it a, uh, a kind of a pass. cursory yeah. glance. Yeah, because uh, we're getting asked about it. So. Yeah, and, and when is it? Uh, Summer. It, uh, July 27th through 29th. Uh, three days. Th- three days, which... Uh, getting, co- getting a lot closer to something that I'd be interested in. Uh, Bring it down to one. Uh, well, yeah, break <laughs> Three down. hours. To me, Friday Friday and Saturday. Let me just see Power Trip. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, what's your take on this? Um, so, uh, my take is that the top people... Uh, this is kind of the scuttlebutt, is that people are like, oh... It's only one king down in ten yard fight in E Town at the top, because I think people are getting kind of spoiled, quote unquote, by the number of headline level bands that this is hardcore brings out. But I, you know, yeah, it's a little soft up top. But I think the rest strong, par for the course. Uh, I think more this, than par yeah. for the course. I think yeah. I think the middle is strong. I, yeah. I, I I'm looking at it now. And it's like all the bands that we would want to see on something uh, with a couple wild cards. Uh, I think that, you know, look, uh, Joe, don't be angry. I, 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 I think that uh, it, 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 this is hardcore through, through their efforts to outdo themselves every year is eventually and it doesn't have to be this year for you if you're a one king down fan and a 10 yard fight fan and oh this is you're popping off you're like this is fucking glory to me but i think it is an undeniable fact that at some point he's going to have to pivot to a current strong headliner uh instead of a reunion sort of thing because eventually like our hardcore history as people is just not long enough and it's it definitely has to be diminishing returns and the bubble point. has burst well yeah there's and nobody left I think I said the other day that I think 10 years ago reunions were uh, net positive sure. about 5 years ago they turned into a net neutral and now they're for the most part uh, a lot of based on value and return a net negative I'm not saying that about this in specific I've actually seen some people excited more people than I expected my 20, excited for my one king down. My 21 year old girlfriend very excited for one king down. So Pat, okay. This is, you know, from your from your homeland. Um can you tell <laughs> Cubs. Give me the one king town. Ta- <laughs> one king town. One king town. That's really what Albany is—a one can, king town. Can you tell me a little? Yeah, the the empire, the jewel of the empire state. Tell me about one king down and your personal relationship to it, and what it was about at the peak. Your personal relationship <laughs> with Jesus Christ. Uh, so, so uh, it one king down was the Albany band, undeniable. One hundred percent. The biggest thing from Albany for a lot of years. A lot of years. Uh, All even years. people from Troy liked it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they'd come up that mountain, that side of that hill. <laughs> they'd cross the they river. Cro- yeah, they're, they're coming over the bridge. Uh, so uh, you can catch me in uh, some old videos, sing along to One King Down. I think that this band has done a lot for with a little. Yeah, not to be it, a dick. No, but. not to be a dick. It, there's just not a lot of recorded output because uh, two LPs. Set. What's say again? Two LPs. No. Uh, no, uh, no. One LP, two EPs. Right. So w- w- Blood Lost Revenge is an EP, an five EP. or six songs. Okay. I mean, it's long. Yeah, yeah it for is. a hardcore because it was record. a twelve inch. Right, but it's probably like a twenty five minute record, okay. right? Yes, yeah. something guess. like that. I would guess. I mean, it's like a fucking six minute song in there about veganism. Yeah. So, so I mean, we're gonna have love, to cut that love, one right out. Love the six minute songs. A lot of talking. Yeah, some... well, a lot of of the time stuff that mm-hmm. uh, technically doesn't age well, but I think is I think people really do enjoy One King Down for these reasons. Cosplay uh, is well, yeah. Th- I mean, that that's an element of it for sure. But I think that there's a couple things going on. The guitar, the, the riffs are big. Those are big, big riffs, riffs, and people enjoy that always. Also, Rob's voice is discernible. And I think at a time then. where that was yes, and, and it made a big difference. Uh, sure. Huge, important. I think I, I honestly, can hear the words. Yes, sure. I, to, my friends who didn't like hardcore music liked One King Down because it wasn't barking, quote unquote. Well, and for they were more on the heavier side of things, yeah. especially in that lane. They didn't have. There wasn't a lot. There was discernible vocals. Yeah, with that's one hundred percent. Also, really, really, really good live at their prime. Really good. So like, oh, they were pros. Yeah, one hundred percent. So uh, I should mention because we do an extra grind thing here. Uh, I don't have an extra grind. 
they might with me. Yeah. Uh, th- so that's worth saying. Uh, I mean, we're being honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, 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 <laughs> There's probably some access ground, ground each way. Yeah, well, if I'm going to big up them, uh, they can take it in stride that they can hate me all they fucking want. But we're, I'm just going to speak some truth. Uh, I don't know how they're going to fill out a, a headline slot. Uh, right. I mean, it's minimally what? I mean, it's probably not some contractual, like, you need to play an hour or you don't get paid. No, but right. it's probably oh, yeah, yeah, like how long they're going to play for. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, 45 minutes minimally. And yes. they had two singers. So will they play songs from the later era? Probably not. The LP is a different singer. Right. Yeah. I actually think the LP is strong. Yeah. A lot of people. I know a lot of kids now. who love it. I don't it, know yeah. if anybody in current day 2018 would give a shit about that record. But I think I remember when hearing that, I was like, oh, this is a good record. Yeah. Then there's a seven inch after that that was flatlined, flatlined it, immediately. It, it, yeah, well, it, that's it, right. That went nowhere. The, the recording it came out like a year too late. Uh, there's a good song on it. The recording is hasp. just not. Yeah, hasp I don't even know what that. Yeah. Uh, a hasp is a door hinge, uh, but there's just hmm. the, there's just no. Uh, uh, it, it wasn't recorded in such a way. It wasn't promoted in such a way. It just it didn't hit. Uh, right, right. So, in my view, both one king down and ten yard fight. Might, might, and again, uh, this is a weird thing for me to talk about knowing that some of these dudes beef me because I don't, this sounds like a shot. Right. It's really not. I, I, if, if, if they promise not to punch me in my face, I'll sing along to One King Down. I, I'll have a good time at the fucking show. What is the favorite, I mean, you what is your favorite One King Down song? Oh, I mean, what's, what's the, uh, more hate than fear. Yeah, more that's hate, the hate than, more hate really than good, fear yeah. is probably the fucking, that's you would say this is kind of like they were formative time for oh, you. Like you were so psyched. Like, Late high school, early, yes. yeah, right. So Mid this high, it, early right. high school. So this was it. it. Yeah. Fucking great. Uh, That's such a weird vibe to to have some weird thing. It only really happens in hardcore where it's a band because I've had I've had it where it's a band you at a young age are like this is a band because it's also at a time before hardcore before you kind of realize like oh there's not. You you probably looked up to those dudes and are like this band's awesome. They were I like they were like fucking band. rock stars as far yeah. as Albany went, yeah. 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 And like, but I I gotta say another thing about and you all probably experienced this too. Getting older, I've become like a rapper. Like when Cameron says like yeah beef with that motherfucker, but yeah I also listen to his hits. I don't give a fuck. Right. Like that's <laughs> I don't like everybody I listen to. Oh my god, I don't like anybody I listen to. <laughs> and, and, no. and and that's where I'm at is like. To be totally frank, if I went through this, uh, this is hardcore lineup band for band, I could probably find three bands that I got some sort of thing with. I'd sing along for all the ones I enjoy. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like possible beef? Yeah, like he's mild cre- beef. Like I think the, he's like cre- he, I think he's thinking about making up some new beefs. Yeah, I think he I mean, is. Like you're just I mean, trying I to certainly can't no, be so, taking so your so shots so you get I, those sand heads. I, I fucking certainly can't. So to, the roof. to kind of flip to the other side of that, one king down because one king down actually maybe it's part of the EVR thing, but they crossed more than a lot of bands who I would have associated them with. Sure. To like like yo, they toured Europe with hands tied and ten yard fight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's wild. <laughs> yep. But they but they sort of like because of that a lot of that scene which was i was more familiar with gravitated towards them we're like yeah one king down they're cool though that's that band's cool you should listen to them you know so like it's weird but you know they'd hate snap case but they'd listen to one king down totally a 100 like a pretty comparable band 100 and maybe and i I think some of that's time and place too you know like because snap case had kind of gone into a different zone yeah but but so then 10 yard fight uh, is it lps 10 yard fight no is hardcore pride back on track back on track lp and uh the only way ep right so the same, I've never even heard that last one. It's actually, it's stronger than the LP. Okay. The LP, you talked about on an episode before now, um, the wait for <laughs> the uh, Earth Crisis Gamora's End, right? Mm-hmm. That is what it felt like for me, and I've referenced this with some other friends who are 10-yard fight heads, waiting for the 10-yard fight LP. Back on track was like we were waiting for it, and so and excited hit. about it. No, not as no. much. With some Hardcore people, Pride, the like, big one? Hardcore Pride is it. It's a six song EP. First song so, is anti. First song is anti Ray Capo. Second song is anti Gorilla Biscuits. I think. I love it. All right. I'm right. Going go to back. your shore. Yeah. You got to know what the no. fuck for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What the fuck for? Wouldn't be caught dead at your fucking show. So good. Um, back in '82 yeah, when I'm the Cowboys revisit. was strong. You I'm have revisiting. no, and it's the demo. The demo has the like song about stri- yeah football uh, football. And yeah. The demo hardcore pride are like that's it. Then back on track comes out on EVR, and it's fine, but like. It was, again, it was something that we had built up so much, and it definitely didn't land. And I think they had kind of changed. By the only way, they had a couple hits. So, um, What are we playing for them? Huh? I wonder who's in it. I think it's all the original dudes. Dahlbeck's playing. Dahlbeck, I think Clevo, I think uh, LaCroix. Who's playing drums? 
Uh, I don't know. Maybe Ben Chusid. Maybe either Murph or Ben Chusid. Ben Chusid was Mur- the drummer. Murph would do it. He was only the drummer on Demo and Hardcore Pride, I think. Um, or maybe after that, because I think... Ben Chusid was after that. Oh, Murph's he was? early. Yeah, Murph's oh, early. Oh, okay. So I, I think... Um, I just don't know who's clamoring for it. And I say this... And I, I joked about it. I am a co-star in the Ten Yard Fight <laughs> last show video for about forty-five minutes of the hour-long set. Um, I love Ten Yard Fight. Like, there's a weird love. I, you know, but I, I don't know who's super excited for it. Does this go over bigger at a United Blood? I don't know I because don't... Right Brigade played United Blood a couple years ago, and it wasn't. Yeah, but great. I mean, I feel like this is hardcore. Is not the place. I, I'm gonna... This is hardcore. Is people going to style and fight and mosh and. Eat cheesesteaks and like these dudes are gonna come yeah. up there. Like, there's no mosh parts. I'm gonna say that that's true. T- I think they're a great band. Don't get me wrong. I actually enjoy Ten Yard Fight, but there's no. Uh, you know, I haven't listened to it in 20 years. I remember it being trash. But I'm gonna say that I, uh, E Town to me, to my eyes, and this could be just whatever. E Town seems like a bigger headliner than than just na- <sighs> but name recognition alone. You yeah. can see, you, if you want to see E Town in the last three years, you could have. TYF hasn't played in a long time. Well, so. Hasn't played in 20 years. Yeah, that's true. Okay. 20 years. Okay. I think the last time Ten Yard Fight yeah. proper did a reunion was when they they broke up Edge Day 99 and then did a quick reunion Edge Day 2000. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I think that's the last time they actually proper played. So, And they always did well in Philly. And I feel like it might be one of those things where... You get some old people out. You get some people excited, and and lots of dudes in Iverson jerseys coming out and moshing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, so I'm going to say uh, I really like everything. After I mean, don't get me wrong. I would go have a great time for One King Down, and I hope that there's a million people like my girlfriend who are totally excited about this. Will uh, One King Down play another show? I they, I expect an Albany show. They'd be after foolish this. not to do an Albany show. Yeah, they'd be foolish. Could uh, they could they sell out a 300 cap room in Albany? Yeah. Yeah, I I would think so. I, we have a friend that thinks they could do a thousand cap. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. But I think that's kind of crazy. But but maybe they're already they, maybe they get six hundred in sure. there. Uh, you know what? It's it's really we've probably all talked about this. After a certain age, if you are not a classic band, like we're talking a Gorilla Biscuits, the, the echelon yeah. or Upper or echelon. higher, you know what I mean? And there's not too many higher. No. So unless you are that. Unless your fans are all locals who never left, it is it becomes really hard to do a sustainable reunion in a big room. I mean, that's what E Town does. That's true. I mean, but, uh, they sell out Starland. Yeah. Would I you know be, what? Would that's I right. Ro- they do it local, and then yeah. I, I referenced. I think they played East Coast Tsunami a couple of years back, and I don't think it went big. Right. So uh, hold but, on. But but they can play Starland do once we, every other year. Do it two thousand people big, or something crazy. Every, yeah. yeah. Well, now we're talking. Now we're into like the class the class issues of uh, uh, of hardcore music. But would I be wrong to say that? Yo, there's a lot of E-Town fans that never left the tri-state. Or, oh, you know 100%. I mean? Well, there's a lot, and there's also a lot of E-Town fans who were only really ever E-Town fans. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. So that's a, that's, and that's kind of localized phenomenon. Having played an E-Town show in the last three years, I can vouch for that 100%. There's, I mean, we played in front of probably 1,900 people. No shit. Dude, it was bonkers. Okay, so I'm- At Starland. I, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm We a, weren't even main support. I'm going to say that. Who's main support? Arson? <laughs> VOD. Yeah. It was Indecision, VOD, E Town. That's a good show. It was a great show. Banner played. Hi, Joey. Yeah. Suburban Scum played. Razor Blade Hand Grenade. But I have a funny story about that, too, but that'll be for off the podcast. Like, they're not, there's not 2,000 hardcore kids. That's right. But there might have been 500 hardcore kids, and those kids went nuts for hardcore bands. So right. you look like fucking world beaters. It looks great. Because there's 1,500 people standing around. There's those 500 well, people up front going crazy. What's and going awesome. on with that? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they definitely have, like, their own, like, WSOU. I listen to Clutch. Yeah. And fucking, Mar- you know, whatever. Any town concrete. Like, they're not what we think they are, like, in terms of, like, a hardcore adjacent band. Uh, Quick thing before you dive in the rest of the lineup. We're fantasy booking the One King Down Albany show. Who else is playing? Drug Church? No, no, no. I wouldn't do anything recent. I wouldn't do anything okay. current at all. Um, I mean, indecision, clearly. Uh, <laughs> Most precious blow with me. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, if I, you really, you know, show your balls. I mean, I mean, honestly, that's that would be a massive Albany show. You guys were always big in Albany, but I, I would say... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it should be on my fucking tombstone. <laughs> no, I, we're going to put that in the zine. Thing. Big uh, in Albany, BIA. Uh, d- uh, terrible curse. I, I would say... Uh, 
you know, you go with something like end of line. You go with something like straight jacket. You What's go with the, something that do you go band. local? Hans band. Oh, you go hundred percent local. Burning bridges. I wouldn't, burning bridges, I wouldn't no. even go as they current, can't open. Uh, they could open, but I wouldn't even go that. You could do like OKD stigmata. Oh, yes, ooh. yes, you could. Oh my god. Yes, you could, and that would be a massive show. And I feel then like it that would sell would, out a thousand. And I feel cat. like you get those weird random looky loose from Connecticut and Western Mass. Oh yeah, definitely. And the Youngs will fly out probably. Yeah, for sure. Let's be realistic. I mean, Troy is the spot. What's there's some big space in Albany that Stigmata and Section Eight sold out. Two nights of yes, fifteen hundred kids a night yes. in advance. <laughs> yes, not walk up in advance. Yes. Right, and we're gonna talk. We gotta talk yeah. local because this is we've touched on with some Jersey stuff. There's these local things. If you're from a spot that has a local thing, we want to hear about it because that uh, Pat's talked about it in the past. There's a time where you go, that shit sucks, but as you get older, you really appreciate it and go, wow. And they're like, a that's so wild. Like, how yeah. did that happen? But. Uh, so we said that we'd probably revisit this lineup in a more uh, uh, d- d- deep dive sort of way. I'm just going to say uh, the real glaring thing here is Knocked Loose being uh, billed as low as they are. I totally get that this is... Um, like a rite of passage for them, I think. Uh, yeah. I, I, lack of a better term. I, I, it's an interesting look because all things being equal... That band draws more than any, anybody. It, it would be band. them and E Town would be the two headliners. They're bigger. No. Yeah, absolutely. Fucking, they're bigger than E Town. Oh no, yes, I agree. Are. But but day to day. Sure, sure, sure. It's a it's a humble look. It's a good look for them that they're taking. Yes. Like, just because they want to play a hard, like a big hardcore fest. Yeah, is, I th- I think the only the only gamble there is attrition. Uh, no, cuts away oh, at their name, sort of like kind of. It could. So uh, to me. And this is actually, you know what? We didn't think this was going to be a long episode. Let's just do something that's let's a dive. Li- let's do a, do a something a little long. So <laughs> we hear from people that uh, are jumping off the Code Orange train because the Code Orange has become in some way uh, too self aware for them. You, you know what I mean? Like Code Orange is the machine cocky. has come online. Co- co- uh, Code Orange is cocky. You know what I mean? That, that's, sure. I, I think and that's they, part of their gig, part and, of their deal. And uh, I mean, you can't say there. But is there. that put out there? That what? That people are... No, no. The Code Orange is cocky. I mean, I, I just think, on their social media presence. Maybe not in, in person, quite honestly. But, oh, no. I mean, look. I mean, that's I, your boy. I'm, I'm their biggest defenders. Uh, but but like I'm going to say that there are people... People reach out to us and have opinions on, on Code Orange. And uh, I get it in one respect because as we talked about on this podcast, when... Uh, uh, what the fuck is the, the, the Ben Cook band? Uh, no warning. No warning. When no warning, young governor. When no, yeah, when young gov was uh, popping, they had the reputation as being the band that was very much uh, up their own ass, very much right. like like. And, and it was probably mostly him, to be fair. One hundred percent person. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I don't know if they were like that guy Jordan. Like I think it was just kind of like he comes across a certain way, right? And he's in person, actually a really nice dude. As yeah. as are most people, right? But sure. like, so, uh. Knocked Loose is kind of, I think, appeals to the other person, the person that likes a more humble presentation. Now, I get it. If I was a kid, I might even agree. As an adult, I like you talk your shit. You know what I mean? Like, fucking- I mean, you do do a wrestling podcast, so it makes sense. Yeah, well, cut your cut your promo. Cut your promo. You know what I mean? I'm a believer in cut your promo, but it can alienate people. That's that's part of the gamble. People, yeah, people love to big you up and tell you like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, Don't go and, too far. And, but that's a, that's actually a thing that I really resent about hardcore in 2018. No, let me say this. Not too hardcore in 2018. Hardcore as an adult. This okay. is a thing that I resent because I'm a very confident person. I talk my shit. Mm-hmm. And when people get angry, like as I've seen on occasion about my bands, it's like, are you motherfucking serious? I'm talking about <laughs> the only thing in life that I'm good at. I'm not. Ta- I'm not j- jumping out of the window and saying I'm. I'm really good at fucking day trading. Right. I'm. I'm, re- <laughs> I'm really good at painting. I'm not saying any of that. I'm right. saying, yo, know, hey, here's the thing that I've, you know, and I deserve this credit. It, yeah, it you was know? destined. Furthermore, I guess, I, I guess that like there is a kind of a feeling that if you are confident, that's for rock artists or rappers. Hardcore bands are supposed to be like downplaying it all well, the time. You're supposed to be happy to be there. A- a- uh, no, I mean, so I want to pull and like tighten it up because I think we just. I'm, I'm all over. No, no, no. And it, but but what you're talking about is interesting. So we're saying that Code Orange has been putting off a vibe. 
Well, and I, it's not being picked up on, whereas Knocked Loose is putting off a different vibe, and it's kind of being picked up on the other way. Like the humble Midwestern kids, like just, hey, look at this. Look what we're doing. Well, we we all agree. Tell me it, Bob. You haven't spoken on it yet. Uh-huh. This Their placement on this, and you know, Joe makes his fest the way he wants to make it, but they would have to agree they're they're doing headline numbers in most of the country. Yes. So in all the country I'd go as far to say. Right. So like them being this low is a humble look. Yes. Yeah. I'm and sure it, it makes had- it almost makes me think if they were higher up, does that draw more eyeballs from out from that world that would help pull into this as hardcore if their name was just a little bigger. Right. And that's kind of a gamble on everybody's part. I find it interesting. I think it, I, th- their inclusion is both interesting because a lot of people think that they are uncanny Valley hardcore, right. not the real thing, whatever. Uh, although, you know, we after in- meeting them, I would yeah, we, tend we, to disagree. We, but- inter- we interviewed them. Uh, and they'll have heard it by the time. They yeah. Hear this, so. You'll, you'll have heard it by now. And I think that it'll probably win a lot of people over, but, and this set will probably win a lot of people over. Sure. But I think that all of these bands, and let's just give them credit. When we talked to the Knocked Loose guys, they were um, incredibly involved in their own future. Is yes. that fair? Yes. And that's what Hands I love. That's yeah. what I love about Code Orange. That's what I that that's just regardless of how anybody feels about music. I love when these bands do a thing that I cannot manage to do, which right. is care about the bullshit. Care and they're about the so things. meticulous about yeah. every piece of their. Like yeah, please. No, I, I was gonna say, we've kind of touched on this. You've gotten better with that. Yeah, I, I used to let everything go by, you re- and I think it's helped your band's success. Agreed. And I think that that's something. And I mean, we've touched on it. Maybe it's a funny point that we're hitting. Like uh, with indecision, most precious blood, What's that? had the same artist on things, and you guys care. Like, like you genuinely care. About the stuff that happens in the decision between you and Justin and, sure, and Rachel, yeah, of course, you know what of course, I mean, yeah. right? Like, but there's like a continuity to it, right? That I think Code and the, Orange does have. Code Orange does, and it seems like those the guys from Knock Loose kind of expounded and said, "We booked this tour and we picked the local openers everywhere." To the dismay of their manager slash booking agent, being like, "God damn it, you guys are making my life hard because this would be easier if I could just do right. it." And that kind of care is important. Right, like a month tour or so, picking two bands in every. I couldn't name the two bands in every town when I was on when I was touring nine months a year. I couldn't be like, "All right, San Antonio, we got you know, will you know, whatever, will like, to die and will to right, will to we'll die, live, and yeah. we're gonna hopefully get you know, fucking whoever you know, yeah. die young, and, die young yeah. to come over from Houston, hopefully, or so who from Austin, like I, that's pretty impressive that they had that much wherewithal and that much interest yeah, to be oh, like for sure. that kind of hands on and a positive way not in a fucking annoying way in uh like a supportive way and it seems like those code orange dudes took a similar approach when they did that um their headliner for forever yo they are really it's not just touring but touring is a great example of it both of these bands are really part of the reason that they're successful in my view is because they are they treat it like a job where every aspect of it matters towards the goal of small business ownership uh, being successful, right? So, uh, look, I made this comparison because I see a bands that I think a lot of people, right or wrong, might lump together, right? And 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 I've done that because I think early knocked loose has more than a passing similarity to Code Orange, right? Or early Code Orange. So, uh, they probably neither band would probably appreciate this comparison. They want to be their own thing, but I just I find this is hardcore to be an interesting thing for both bands. Code Orange not playing it this year. Uh, I just find it interesting because of how they're always presented, both bands being potential Headliner. headliners any given year. You know what I mean? I mean, so, I think that's more telling for Code Orange than it is for Not Loose. This is like sort of a gamble for Not Loose, I think, because, you know, they just played Philly, drew 800 kids, whatever it is. At a show like this, are 800 kids going to come see them with, you know, District 9 and whoever for $50, whatever the fuck it is per ticket? Per night, right. I think that's hard. It's not like this stuff is all about like value and you kind of like I bunch all this stuff together so I can justify paying 60 bucks. I, You're not paying 60 bucks to go see Code, uh, to go see Knocked Loose. Code Orange like was less of a gamble because it's like at that point, say even last year, they were still like 
fucking hardcore kids were all in. Yeah. And they could have headlined and it not been a problem. Knocked Loose is like, you never know. They might go up there and like, it might be crickets because it's, you know, kids that are there, like, they're too hardcore for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They'll have their cr- crowd clearly, but it won't be as bonkers, maybe because kids are kind of still, you know, warming up to them. It, it, does their crowd come? That's, That's the game. That's a lot to ask. I see. I'm going to say that based on what I've seen, their crowd might be one of the few that does come like in mass to something that they don't feel welcome at or isn't their thing or whatever the fuck. And because the thing, I I tend to agree because. Tie it into what I said last week, and we kind of, or last week, whatever, yeah. the time before now, we discussed <laughs> how sick of it all touring with Knock Loose, even though they don't have that hard, heavy breakdown thing that, you know, maybe Terror can provide, but that they're young, kind of interesting, impressionable fans from a generality who are willing to look and say, oh, I haven't heard 10 Yard Fight. Yeah, I'll stick around after Knock Loose and watch this, maybe. Oh, so I maybe totally they could draw, you know. Yeah. But is it likely? I don't know. And would it help yeah. if Knock Loose was bigger? I don't know. Well, because then you'd feel more invested. It's like those. That's my band. I need to go support them. I, Look at them on these lit, this headlining of a festival at the TLA. Is it the TLA? The uh, it's at Electric Factor. Electric Factor. It's a big fucking room. So I, look. This is uh, we always end up in this space where I'm making decisions for promoters that don't need my input. Right. But well, we just fantasy booked One King Down's down next show. <laughs> it's true. Enough. So I mean, we but, are so, the voices of the culture. Northern Lights. So forgive me. This is hard, this is hardcore <laughs> crew. You do good work. This is a good looking year. I'm just saying that I the what stuck out to me was that uh, bands that I know their value because you and I yeah. have seen them. Sure. I. Uh, on this is hardcore play this pocket role they go smaller and it is i assume that's calculated on joe's part and on the band's part i assume right because these are people both parties know their business signing up yeah i just always find it interesting that both these two bands who are worth tickets are nestled and not up front maybe it's by choice could be. I, I just that's the thing that stuck out to me about this yeah, particular fest. So, okay, uh, more later. Yeah, that was. Right. That I was mean, I think the plenty the, of time. The support list is a good indication of how well hardcore is doing in 2018 because there's a lot of young, awesome bands on there. Yeah, uh, you, you know, know what I mean. Like it's a, it's really kind of like shows you like what the fuck is going on right now because there's a lot of bands that were like, oh shit, that's awesome that this band's playing, that this band's playing. It's not just, oh, cool, some other fucking band from Jersey got back together. Or like, oh, you know, like, it's a good mix of, you know, the Agents of Man and awesome bands like that. And then young kids that are being included and being treated well. Yeah. Hopefully. I, I mean, I'm, uh, yeah, I think I think that it's cool. We'll, like I said, we'll go deep dive at some point. We got to talk about Harvest at some point. That, that, that's crazy. Uh, I wonder, that okay. Was, so uh, <laughs> let's move into Black and Blue, which also just announced their lineup. Yes. Uh, so this is. I don't want to say this is not for me, but the first half of the day necessarily isn't for me. Sure. And I don't, do you think that that's going to be sort of a, a, pop, a popular of the- sentiment or, or not? Do you like the smaller bands, the big bands on these are undeniable. Sure. These are great. A lot of New York. I mean, yes, it's, it's all New York. Yeah. So, uh, these headliners are great New York acts that will bring people out. This is a small venue, and which a tiny is an interesting room. choice. Sure. Yes, uh, but uh, um, and no disrespect to the people that we know in these opening bands. Actually, no, whatever. no, but, yeah. But uh, this is the type of fest that I like. This this is abbreviated. This is small. Sure. Lift. How many bands play in total? Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 bands total. That's Damn. usually, that would be a short day in the past. Correct. A- and at Having many played fests, these. Right. At many fests, yeah. that's a short day. The 14 people, like 14 bands is like, oh, it's a half day. That's 14 like a bands, Yeah, 14 <laughs> bands over two days. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. I, I See, I think it's really cool. This is cool for me. The, yeah. I'm going to go to this. This is cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I think with this, though, I think... Knowing the venue size and everything, this works out perfectly for those types of younger bands that might not have a huge crowd yet. Having been to the majority of these things, you know, if you're playing at 130 and there's 400 kids there, 
in the fucking Web- in Webster Hall that fits 1,500 people, yeah, it, it looks like fail. a goddamn, yeah. you know, right. like you're in a fucking mausoleum. You might as well be playing the four kids. Right. But if you're playing this, you know, this show, you're going on at 3.30, there's 150 kids in a room. That's fucking great. Feels great. And I feel like people that go to that are in for the long haul. I, I do too. I, it's I, not like I'm just going to show up for Madball. I'm just going to show up for AF. I think it's like, this is my day out. And it's also not, it's not oppressive. A right. seven band day. Well, that's a long show. It's not a long fest. It's a short fest. A lot of fest. I mean, as someone who did fest, we had fest days where there was nineteen or twenty bands playing. It's a lot. To it's expect a lot. People to sit it's through. a lot. And it's usually and the like older that breaking we get, point. The more it feels. Yeah. And like, did you feel like when your experience is that like is that there that one band that it's like all right, this is where it's really going to turn over. Like this is like, you know, they might skip these first seven bands, but yes. this band is the this band. Is the that band. Everyone's and you gonna- you kind of book to that, and you try to make sure there's stuff earlier in the day. But you also understand, like, hey, this is tough. And, yeah. like, you know, the worst spot is a three-day fest, the band who's opening on Sunday. That is a rough spot People because dying. everybody's dying and sleeping. And, like, you know what? Let's let's just wait. There's a big line at the brunch spot. Let's just – we'll right. just chill. Well, Do you think cl- closing a fest is difficult as well? Absolutely. Impossible. Yeah. And, and, I, I, yeah. I, re- I think it's really the, the least desirable place to be on a fest. I think the really? least desirable is openings if you're on a three-day fest. Sure. Opening Sunday, because that's really tough, especially if it's a long day. Sure. Or closing Sunday. Closing is really tough unless you've got that like, hey, we're last band goes on at eight. Right. And we did that at least one year for Sound of Fury, and it was pleasurable when we were doing the three-day format. And it worked. It, it yeah. worked. It was just better. It was just right. felt a little cleaner because the worst it gave, because our theory was like, Mostly people from California are here, a lot of driving distance. So if you leave, you know, wherever we were, Oxnard, Ventura, wherever, like and head home and you live in the Bay Area, you're home by midnight. And that's not, doesn't that mean, terrible. Yeah. it just means that you can wake up and go to work and you're a little groggy, but you're not dead. Sure. And if you live in the LA area, you go home and go to sleep at a normal time and right, you're it's a normal show. beaming. Yeah. But um, no, that's not easy. But this short lineups. Small room. Small room is cool here. Small room. From the folklore, we considered doing Sound of Fury 2008 at the Che Cafe. No way. Yeah. Who were the headliners on that? Well, no, I mean... uh, I mean, not with that. It was big. It was like T.Y. Terror, Underdog, Striking Distance. And the lineup wouldn't have been that. But it was. there was a lot of factors that went into our consideration of that even. Um, we only had a couple conversations, but I called Spencer Gooch. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, from Plata and yeah, What was he? He was in some band. Uh, no, he was in uh, Find Him and Kill Him. That's right. He was in other bands, too. But, but I remember, that's in, a band that's I remember. The first yeah. one. But we really talked about it. The, what's the capacity at Che? 250, maybe? I wouldn't even say that. Two, if there, Two? I've oh, really? been to shows with 250 people. It's gross. And it is sardines. Yeah. It's sardines. Oh, wow. Um, but it would have been the move to be like, we a lot of reasons but there was an idea that it was too big and and, uh, and we didn't really care we just wanted to have a great time had we done it we would have reduced the number of bands sure and that's oppressive it, and it would have been amazing <laughs> yeah. and we talked a lot about <clears throat> the idea that having what you said about Webster Hall 400 people in Webster Hall if you're playing to 400 kids there's hardcore bands who never play to 400 sure. kids sure but playing to 400 kids in a room for 2,000 it's, is really it's tough. Yeah, it's yeah. a bummer. And so the idea, like, uh, you know, break it with this one, it's better to play a 500 cap room to 400 kids than it is to play a 1,000 cap room to 400 right. kids. So, I mean, I, And I think the lineups are cool. Like, going to see, like, number one, all those bands could sell out like Brooklyn Bazaar. No question. A lot of them. No yeah. Madball has. A, in Crown San Diego, he's done it three times yeah. in the last year. A Madball Crown of Thorns show would sell out that room right quick. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I think it's, AF it's a cool... AF might sh- get close. Judge is definitely selling it out. Right. I mean, AF and Judge and the back-to-back, it's a pretty fucking stellar goddamn lineup. You, no. you, uh, you know, this is now where... T- uh, I'm doing that thing again, right, fellas. I'm doing that thing, where I, plan, thing. where I plan people's fucking night. That's good. We're party planners over yeah. here. We got that. We got the One King Down second show at Albany. What do you guys think in September? <laughs> Are we still booking the the One King Down show? You got to wait till it's like not too hot, but the weather's still decent that you won't get snowed. Yeah, we out. don't want it. We don't want it to be too late in the season. Up right. There. It All right. Book us, out there. Let's let's hear it. Make the plans. I would honestly, I think Black and Blue Bowl would be really cool if it was uh, each. It was two nights each. 
night th- three, tr- New York can bring out true headliners. Like yeah. right, which they did. They did really. Yeah, they, I mean, this is fucking strong. Yeah, this yeah is, it's really it's, strong. So this is like overdone, pretty much. I think it's yeah. too much. You know what? The only thing I might change, I'd swing incendiary to the the first night. So do uh, Incendiary, Crown of Thorns, Madball. Right. Because, a, and, and you know, who knows, to be honest, maybe Incendiary has to play over Crown of Thorns. Maybe. Based on the young kids, yeah. but whatever. Um, because Incendiary, Agnostic Front, Judge, that just feels unfair. It's really, that's a stacked line, right? Yeah, yeah. That would be cool like, if it was them and Madball yeah. and AF and Judge. It's two yeah. different crowds, really. Yeah, and maybe you mix it up. Maybe you throw, man, maybe you do the Roger Freddy night. Madball AF. Oh man. Madball uh, AF incendiary. Crown of Thorns. Judge. Judge. I'm gonna say that That's neat. Mix the crowd. Look. That would be cool. Everybody's yeah. got a vision for their fest, and I'm just fucking interjecting. Uh, but I'm just gonna say that like this they should, in my view, they should make this like the fucking uh dropkick Murphy's Boston show where you Oh just, on their yeah, St. You, Patrick's Day. You do it once a year and right. it's just the you would stack it with the four uh, uh you know, four Yeah, next year you get fucking underdog and exactly. whatever else. That's exactly. right. That's yeah. you get nice Murphy's Law, like twenty fifth anniversary yeah. set. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And you stagger it in such a way that you get the occasional kid flying out from Japan because it's like that lineup. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that is the fucking thing. Yeah. And like I don't know. I like. Look, this is cool, and we all are big supporters of getting younger bands in front of people. So I'm not totally. mad at this. I'm just like I'm looking at it from my own tastes and being like, "Yo, like at this juncture in my life, a murderer's row of New York hardcore bands would be super fun." It scratches that itch. It would be super fun. Yeah. And now the one the the elephant in the room that we're not talking about, and perhaps it's not an elephant in the room, but it's a crimson ghost. It's rough. Is that? This falls on the same weekend as the Misfit Show in New Jersey. Yes, this I said be. I don't. And it's Saturday, right? I think that might even help that Sunday Judge AF show. Yeah. Do you think people who are because that Misfits thing is at a hockey arena and it's sold out? <laughs> Eighteen thousand people or something. <laughs> is that true? Yeah, dude, it sold out like yeah, the, sold day out of. the day of. Eighteen thousand. Is that fucking real? Like they had like ridiculous like pre sales and be like, if you have a Citibank card, you can get it on Wednesday. But it's on but, Thursday. But, but, but like it, Friday. Done. They were gone. Out the door. And and the base ticket, the cheapest one, was 50 bucks. I'm going to say something extreme. <laughs> if you gave me the option, if you were like, Patrick, you got to watch the entire Misfits set, or me, Tom, as you describe yourself, sometimes a man of large carriage. Yes. I'm going to jump on your kneecap as you lay <laughs> on the ground. Uh, you can do that right uh, now. I'm going to fucking keep playing. <laughs> as you lay on the ground. Do you not fuck with any Misfits? Not a fucking song. I fuck with the Misfits. I have a ticket. I'm actually pretty excited. Oh, to you're see going? You. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, my, yeah. I fuck. I got a cheap Misf- ticket. I fuck with the Misfits heavy, but I'm not going. It's I experience. think about it, but it's. Can you get me a souvenir like mug or something? Yeah, like, it'd be like forty seven yeah, dollars. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Uh, I, I fuck with them heavy, but yeah, yeah I, mean, I just think it's like something. It's like I never thought it would happen. I kind of want to see it. I'm sort of surprised you don't fuck with Danzig because he's such a dickhead. That's yeah. the only part of him I like. I don't, I, I, you don't like his voice, his no, lyrics, no, just like his dickhead. Not, not a thing. That I, he buys cat food. That's it. I like the <laughs> fact that he is a dick. And, and like, I truly like it. You know what I like, mean? Like, yeah, you I, support it. Like, I truly like it. But Big Christar fan, too. Uh, it, it's a cool lineup, too. You did a it's a weird job. lineup. It's oh, weird. Wait. It's Murphy's Law, oh. Suicidal Tendencies, and Harley Misfits, Fitz. and Harley, Harley's Harley. band is opening. You know what? I, I, this is not me backpedaling, but it is. I, I listened to the episode where we talked about Sick of It All taking out Murphy's Law. Yeah. I was harsh. That's a consolidation move where you are definitely going to get... Everyone. You're going to get the older crowd no, that makes locked sense. in. Maybe throw Who's a younger young band, band on there. who could play that three? Somebody said... Uh, somebody on Twitter, I want to give you credit, but I'm, not gonna, I'm too lazy to pick the phone off my chest... Um, Unified Right, that would be cool. Unified Right, that. Murphy's yeah. Law, sick of it all. Somebody put that line in to, to Craig and say, yo, get this this band from Florida. I mean, they love path. Take Offense. Oh, is that right? They yeah. back Take Offense. Take so, offenses, I mean, that would be yeah. sick on Cal- in yeah, California. True. You know what I mean? That actually would be really good on that tour. That'd be a good Take look. Offense would probably smoke Murphy's Law on most of those shows. Maybe, yeah. And maybe backstage, too. Who knows? Yeah. Smoke <laughs> up with them. Uh, okay, so... Uh, where were we just a second? We're talking about BNB. BNB, shout out. Just small room, you know. Oh, I don't know if they'll cool stay vibe. at this level, to be quite honest with you. I think next year we'll probably go back. If Webster Hall's back together, who knows? 
I love the vibe of being able to go to a different room. Now it's 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 a guaranteed room. We we all know the Brooklyn Bazaar. It's nice. It's a cool, fun room. Yeah, five hundred yeah, caps, six hundred right, caps. Maybe it's cool. It might be it's less, so, is it? I think it's like five. Really? They pack five in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sardines. Because I was yeah. gonna say I've done okay there, so I can't be five. You know what I maybe. mean? Maybe I don't know. I mean, I who knows? Like the way, like do they? Camp both floors to I kind think of like so. massage oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Nice. Like yeah. you can go get a taco, but like we're gonna. You know. Yo, it, it is. <laughs> I don't. Th- I think we take it for granted that like, uh, particularly this might have been a more popular thing years ago. Yeah. When a venue can effectively scam the fire code, oh. that is a blessing from heaven. That is like oh, that, Santos did it. That makes the best yeah, they shows. Did. Mana, mana from heaven. Oh, it's beautiful. My only complaint about. Uh, I big up to the festival in Gainesville. Uh, the fest. The fest. Uh, uh, a couple episodes ago, my only complaint about it is that they are really, they really adhere to fire code. Yo, and at this point, okay. isn't half the like fire department from Gainesville just like kids shoot the, the shoeless with punks water. with beards <laughs> running around with hoses and like, yo, y'all, y'all, this is fun. We don't worry about this tonight. We all dress like Chuck Reagan. Yeah, I, I believe the Ergs. You are. said Tim Barry's playing tonight. We ain't worried about that fire code. <laughs> the, the, the Ergs are the fire department. That's right. so, <laughs> wow. So probably the math department, uh, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> I, I, it's kind of like those shows are really fun. I enjoy playing it, but because they have to be mindful of the fire code. Uh, because they are an annual event that fucking does you right know, across. And the, the fire marshal actually is the dude right. counting and, the money at the door. So and the capacities <laughs> for these places kind of suck because it's like oh, this isn't that crowded. Exactly. Like CBGB is like the capacity was like two hundred people. It's I've seen so shows that funny. there was seven hundred fucking people. Absolutely. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. So it's yeah, but I think this is this you know like. Santos definitely massaged like Rich Hall did uh, dad on broken show there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's like well if we count downstairs we can have 800 people in here like cap is like 500 <laughs> right so they sold 800 tickets yeah 800, so 800, 800 people had to get their asses in that room when Unbroken played and there's yeah. zero yeah. people standing downstairs when that happens yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean yeah. like they had the openers play downstairs and that was like a 200 cap room whatever it's actually a great venue and then like the last three bands, it was Jesuit Indecision and Broken, were upstairs. So then everyone had to cram into every crevasse to get into the room. It's perfect. And, and don't get me wrong. We, we, on a serious note, we know that fire code can be important. However, yes, really fun shows take place when, when it's it can close. be uh, massaged. When so, it can be blurry. Um, what happened to Santos? I don't. It just. It stopped doing shows. It just closed. Yeah, right. It's closed. Okay. It's gone. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Like I think they were having. Problems as far as like with their other like dance nights and stuff. I remember like <laughs> maybe like that. I think that that maybe the Unbroken show was like a Saturday or Sunday. That like Friday night, someone died in the bathroom from overdoing. <laughs> so it was kind of like I think it was just like, yeah, we're done. God, like Andrew WK used to like walk up and down the line and like yeah. shake people's hands and stuff. Is that right? Yeah, because yeah. he owned it. Right, yeah, that's right. right. That's yeah. right. Uh, okay, my, my boy. Is there anything else we want to talk about? Um. Oh shit. Uh, blown up, son. No, the the Sixers just beat the Cavs. It was cool. Um, <laughs> the Lakers beat the, the Supersonics. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I think you know we've been getting hit up with a lot of questions. So I was hoping we could do a little mailbag. Yeah, it, 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 good? this is like a very free form episode because everybody is at United Blood or Damage City right now. So like, yeah, it, it's pretty much like we didn't bother getting a guest. We're just like, hey, everybody, yeah, we're, have, we're really relaxed. We set this up fun. like less than ten hours ago. Yeah. Exactly. I'm in work clothes. Yeah, that's true. You look and the other two of us aren't aren't wearing shoes. Yeah, you look, fucking thanks, man. You you were like uh, we were thinking about doing a Patreon video, and you're like, ah, I look like a herb. I'm coming from work, but you, uh, your herb look is like I'm sharp. Yeah, yeah I mean, I present pressure. myself well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm a senior director. I'm like well, kind of in charge have, of a I'll five be, million dollar program. I'll I gotta, be frank with you. I have no idea what a senior director is, but uh, you look like one. Thank you. I mean, I can tell what I do while Bob looks for questions. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I, I well, so the first one was something I actually put out there now, and because we, we did yeah, go kind of long. Um, I don't know what's happening, but the, the roommates are cooking something good. All right. The I put this question out there on our Twitter, and it's one that we actually have. Hey, Bob, here's some a authorities too. What's our Twitter? Our Twitter is good move social media at Axe to Grindcast. Um, you should follow us. You should tell your friends to follow us. We will not you, follow you back. <laughs> no, we just don't follow anybody just because it's not fair. But we will like every mention you make of us. It's just one of the things we do. Maybe and we, we answer your questions. Should we do it? It makes it a little easier for it to for us. I don't. Ha- I'm not signed into our Twitter. Oh, okay. ah, so sometimes I have to like 
I, okay. I, if we can get a hashtag, Axe to Grind Podcast. Yeah, okay. whatever. So I can whatever. just click on that, po- you know, and just read all the shit you guys talk. You know what? It's, yes, we should do just a hashtag Axe to Grind, but it makes me wonder if we shouldn't do that as like a specific. Well, I, you know what? When we when we try to get other people's axes to grind, they don't get the format and they go really hard. Like they in an ugly way. That yeah. motherfucker yes. didn't, right. you know, told me to get out of the line if I don't want an autograph. Uh, like, no, that was, <laughs> that, that was, that was actually great. funny. But like, that was funny. Yeah. But like, you know, like it's a weird thing. I, you tell me, do we ever go over the line? Being grinding axes. Yeah. I've gotten the, feedback that we're like, you guys are really. Oh, we always tame. get that. Yeah, we get that all the time. Like we're but too it, nice. Yeah, it's it chalk that up to that we want to talk about things that make us happy and excite us. Right. Like we definitely and we started will touch on some stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think we started kind of like here's where we're gonna take the piss out of people, and it was like. It is a lot of fun and there's a lot of great stuff going on. Maybe we'll just talk about that instead. Yeah, Instead I, of me being like, you know, or you being like, the guy fucked up didn't recognize me and like, throw down hates us because we burned Bibles. It was just kind of like, you know what? There's a lot of cool shit going on. I mean, fuck it. Uh, you know what, though? If you want to get into fucked up guy not recognizing, we can do it all day. I mean, hey, we can. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, that's all well and good. And now I'm over here and the fucked up dude's my homie. And I, I said, the throw dudes down dudes were nice at the burrito spot. So, you know. You um, right, the one, but we yeah. can talk about verse at some point And we'll do the verse story and I'll, I'll get heavy. All right, cool. Hey, there you those go. Were, yeah, that, that, no, that, those, dudes, those dudes were cool. That dude sucked. So, we'll talk about it. that sometime. Fill in the blanks. Yeah. So, um, let's do... So, Let's do some mailbag because we got a lot of good mailbag. We get a lot of feedback. When you email us, we do feed respond. So check that out. Um, I threw this out there because we were talking about bands from a time before now. Um, what would you rather hear? Dwid from Integrity singing Life of Agony, River Runs Red. Or Mina from Life of Agony singing on Integrity, Those Who Fear Tomorrow. Let's start with you, Pat. This is a bizarre question. Uh, I was shocked that we got as much feedback as we did. We people liked ton. people liked this question. When I read this question, I said, "I can throw both of them in the trash. I don't give a fuck." Uh, I'm a very casual Integrity fan and an even more casual Life of Agony fan. So that said, Dwid's voice is pretty fun. Uh, you could put him on anything. You could put him on fucking uh, C is for Cookie. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. He's got- and he could sing that exactly. Yeah, that, that, really so he would crush I mean, that one. C is for Cookie. I mean, he's pretty. He, it, C it, is it, for he, Cookie. It, his voice. Cookie. That's Misha. Yeah, I caught it. That's for Easton. I caught it. So Easton would be like, I know that song. The, I think that uh, Dwid's voice is uh, very, very fun. I don't like every Integrity song at all. And if you do, you're a liar. Yeah, you're yeah. Yes. But lying ass liars. You lying. But I will say that his voice is really fun. Uh, Life of Agony, Mina's voice uh, is one of those things that like totally respect it. A lot going on here. Talented person. I, you hate good voices. I do. They don't do shit. And she's got a great voice. Operatic. Operatic. Like almost like she was, she was doing um, Zoli. Before Zoli did Zoli, like, well, not really, but you know what I mean? I think she brought in the like operatic voice, voice like, and hardcore. I'm good at this. Yeah. I mean, they both have insane voices, but she's mm-hmm. singing over like Black Sabbath riffs while he's singing yes. over Uniform Choice riffs. Right. That's right. Yeah. You know. So the the root of this question actually came from a question I've been pitching to people hypothetically for a long time, which is, would you rather be stuck on an island with Kiss doing James Taylor covers oh, shit. or... On an island with James Taylor doing Kiss covers. The latter. I'm going to go James Taylor doing Kiss covers. Yeah. What if James Taylor's just a dick? That's fine. At least with the well, Kiss Well, you know dudes. Gene Simmons is a dick. Yeah, but you know what? Paul, Ace. Ace is a nice guy. See, Paul's supposed to be nice. They do a lot of drugs. I love no, um Oh, Gene Simmons Gene is Gene and Paul are both straight edge. I didn't know Paul was edge. Yeah, Paul, edge. Interesting. So it's like... That's a tough question. It's a tough question. So just we'll opine on that at a different time. But that's the root of this. So, Pat, you are going Dwid on River Runs Red. Yeah, to be totally frank, I'll take Dwid on a lot of things. Okay, sure. And Tom? I am a gigantic Life of Agony stan. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to picture it in my head, and I think somehow Dwid singing over Life of Agony songs makes more like kind of – it's not – the cognitive dissonance isn't as like prevalent mm-hmm. with this. I feel like if I'm trying to catch Mina singing Die Hard or something. Oh, right. It's, I, I'm trying to like yeah. narrow it down to a song. 
because sure. like I can't think, you know, like. Can you Mita picture singing her singing Misha? Misha? I could actually. I could see that. There's a couple. You can't take a man. Mm. Yeah, well, oh, maybe. My heck. I think that there <laughs> might be. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Motherfuckers. I think that. So your vote is. I would go Dwid for Life of Agony. Okay. And that would be a hard song. Like, the, say the River Runs oh, Red, hard, the song. Or, I mean, I think that record gets really hard. Yeah. And I think. So the part of the reason for this is the idea of, like, where does River Run Red fall in a canonical like is this hardcore how hardcore broadest definitions blah 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 um and it kind of came down to the fact that when we talked about integrity they are considered this dark hardcore band and get a lot more passes and a lot more lanes but in reality they sound like judge with some chromag soloing going on and if you threw you know the dude from wide awake on vocals who knows how that goes over? Sure. You threw a lot of people on vocals, but because of Dwid's demon voice, it really pushed it to the space and a very clearly like hardcore. Now let's flip it and you put Mina on the vocals for that record. You, you probably, to make it really work, you might need to rejigger those integrity songs a little bit. Sure. But it would be less hardcore. Sure. Yeah, it'd be a lot more And metal. River Runs Red would be considered a hell of a lot closer to a hardcore record, even though when talking about it, you know, I did the deep dive this morning. I was like, man, there's so many Sabbath rips on here. Oh, yeah. And they, they really, you know, it's a good record. It's actually a great record. Um, and I would describe myself also as a Life of Agony casual fan because when I got in stuff, they were a band I listened, I thought of as like, Radio rock, not 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 radio rock right. in like a, the mean, worst way, but well, like on the alternative on like WSOU right. or on like ninety five nine the rat. That's right, okay. which is a real thing. Yeah, rock and Robin. Lane. I can picture the the yeah. sticker. I, I mean that and typo like totally. It, it's just to me it falls in this lane of like definitely heavy, definitely for the. When I say the Lemoore's crowd, I every, everybody in this room gets it, but I really don't think that that translates to most of the country. Tom, would you describe Lemoore's? We've done it once. Could you just give me 10 seconds on Lemoore's? Have you ever watched the Jersey Shore on MTV? I have. Put those people in bomber jackets. That's Lemoore's. In 1990, 92. Yeah, being like fucking Cinderella, bro. <laughs> um, That's pretty Lemoore's, much what it is. And, and to kind of context it, the New York hardcore break, New York hardcore, CBs kind of stops doing shows for a while, right? Yeah. And what happens after that is that shows move more to Brooklyn or to ABC No Rio. Right. ABC No Rio is doing like the dirt punts. Let's take off our shoes and roll on the floor. Yeah. And, you know, you get some good stuff. You get some aggressive stuff. Sure. Burn is playing there. Yeah. But then the harder stuff migrates to Brooklyn at Lemoore's. Right. Cro-Mags, Leeway, that sort of stuff. Sheer I, Terror. Yeah, Sheer Terror. Those shows were like crazy. And you're getting... Scary. Towny. Like, of, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, a lot yeah. of neighborhood guys, as you said. A lot say. of neighborhood guys yes. which who didn't like totally get it. Sure. Which had been my experience through all of Brooklyn Hardcore, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, sure. And then, you know, like the dudes that migrated on the D train from the Lower East Side to because they wanted to see the Cro-Mags or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So it was like hardcore kids that are like... You know, I'm going to mosh my face off, you know, during fucking death camps. But if I can hurt that long hair over there, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Right. You know what I mean? It's an kind explosive of like, combination. Yeah, it was really dangerous. Super dangerous. Yeah. And uh, the older New Jersey dudes I do know who were going still, who continued from the CBC to Lemoore's, still, yeah. talk about Lemoore's in this like, yeah, that Alien. was some like dirty shit. Oh, it was like, dude, like all the people that are like legendary to people now. We're kind of holding it down in Lemoore's. Sure. People that, singers and guitar players that everybody looked up to was like. Work in the door or selling drugs. Or, or work in the crowd. Work in the crowd. Oh. <laughs> you know. Getting the business done. Not in some yeah. like criminal way, but maybe no. in a criminal way if, you know, and we're not meaning that unless yeah. we are. I mean, there were shows that were like, like, what are you? Oh, like Fight was playing Rob Halford's band. Yeah. Like after Judas Priest. Yeah. You would think fucking Iron Cross is playing because <laughs> they're like that many kind of like the fuck are you do. Oh, it's like target practice. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know what I mean. Wow. You're not moshing to fight. No, but but, but you're, yeah, you're I've, moshing to fight. <laughs> and I've heard stories of dudes like the like. Oh yeah, we had rolls of quarters. And, oh, you know, brutal. Yeah. W- would this would the Stone Pony be a a, a uh, an analog? Uh a little bit brief mid nineties ish. The real analog is Studio One. Okay. Which was yeah, that's the Newark 
ish. It was North yeah. Jersey. Belleville, it was basically Newark, yeah. like on the other side of Manhattan from uh, from you know Lamores. You hop over and you get to Studio One, and that kind of continued. Yeah. Some of the more ignorant and heavy stuff. Hit Comparable New Jersey though. There. Yeah, I've literally I I can say that I saw the same show at Studio One that I saw at Lamores. There you go. Life of Agony and Shelter. Both places, yeah, yeah. It's a wild show. By and way. the the Life of Agony show in Brooklyn is where it was. If you guys ever had court TV, there was a big trial about it because this bouncer there killed some kid, oh, which I oh saw, bl- like actual like brain fluid coming out of the kid's <laughs> nose. He like threw him off the <laughs> stage as the kid was not prepared to like dive really? at a Life of Agony show. Yeah, uh. and then like another like hardcore luminary was moshing. Can I? Can I talk on this for a second? Yeah, you can. Is this cool? Like, I'm not going to name no, any this names. Is great. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no names. As a kid, so I'm 18. You know, I'm like, I wonder why that guy's moshing with a sweatshirt around his arm. Mm. His sweatshirt moved. His arm was wrapped in chain. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Literally standing in the middle and just like forearm <laughs> shivering people. And people would go flying. I'd be like, that's weird. I wonder what he's got. And he actually had his arm like wrapped, length, in, a like, wrapped in a length of chain. So uh, here's the thing. We get asked sometimes to tell our violent stories. Yeah, I just yeah. did that. I'm sorry. No, it's no, okay. no, 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 no. Yeah. When okay. they happen organically, it's all, it's great. Uh, it's total great. That, that was good. Yeah. yeah. It, it's only, uh, the only reason I mention it is because that was a great story. I'm glad you did. It and they will, com- they will come up. But like the people that, to people that ask us to tell those stories, A, well, we've all seen Terrible things. <laughs> oh yeah. I. I, uh, I it, firstly, it puts us in a weird position. Uh, not because it's even dry snitching. A lot of people have moved on to other parts of their lives, yeah. and we wouldn't use names to begin with. But also because it puts us in this weird position of like, yo, we don't mind being your old people, but I don't want to be your. Right. Y- y- we could have had a podcast where it's like storytelling with yeah. our three friends. Right. Beat down one one. Right. Yeah. Right, I mean, right. we all could have been. We could have had a podcast for fifty episodes and be like, this one time I went to the QE two and I watched some guy get his fucking nose broken. Or right. that we could, and it glorifies that. And I think most of the people involved in that would not necessarily glorify it themselves. And we don't want to glorify it because yeah. honestly. It was a um, bad time. It's a bad time, and, it, and it's it's something that everybody has, and every generation has these things, and it just evolves. But the big thing to me is the idea that um, glorifying that kind of pervades that idea that is really big right now. That like crowd killing is awesome. No, it's oh, fucking sucks. Let's segue. Man. One thing I'd like to talk about before we fucking close shop. I know you probably got other questions. Is the thing that's in the uh, Twitter sphere at the moment is. Uh, uh, Sonny of uh, Hate Five Six uh, suggested knocked loose. Uh, it, it, not everybody might fuck with them, but look, this could be a potentially vital band in getting rid of this horseshoe sure. that is currently the culture for a lot of heavy bands of that type. Right. And I saw some pushback because not everybody fucks with knocked loose, right? Sure. Uh, and then we got at we pardon me we got added in an exchange that I thought was really funny. That if it was a real person, and I think it is, of somebody sa- of somebody responding to Sonny going, "Fuck you, let young. Pe- this is how young people want to enjoy a show. Why do you have to try to police us with your old forty year old bullshit?" And like, oh, I'm feeling triggered. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was ridiculously funny. A right, possibly a- troll, possibly, possibly troll. a troll. But I went and looked at. The- He's been. I think you have to be an embedded committed troll to like have that knowledge like base to kind of work off to of run an account for like a year just to pop off at one like you know like I mean? here's my shot yeah right sure. so like uh but i thought culturally there is probably a few people that feel that way oh i'm sure it's funny when i see those things like when when i see it i go ah oh, fuck that poor band man you oh, know yeah, or like right. when i've experienced the fuck you horseshoe i'm like that was a rough one yep but now it's like so prevalent that it's kind of like, dude, that was fucking. Cr- we had a fucking a pit going all the way to the back of the electric factory. I'm like, it looks like there's four people there. There might have been a thousand, two thousand people there, right. but they're spread out. It doesn't look as cool because in our heads, yep. the iconic photos or like the guy, you know, the singer with his hands up, you know, with everyone pointing or fucking stage diving. Who's you know what I mean? It's no Giant one who has a picture, along. right? No one has a you know their their iconic photo of being like. Here's Check the, out this big space, but there's like those guys moshing. I mean, I'm just gonna be unkind. You look, Please. it looks like a fucking beat VFW show. Sure, you know that's yeah. what it looks like. It, it looks look, like every beat VFW show. Yeah, yeah. It, it, like Goober Central VFW show. Uh, kids that don't know what the fuck is up. That's a lot what, of mosh shorts. Yeah, that's what it looks like yeah. to me. Now, the flip side of that is, 
those people that are dancing are having a great time. Yeah, but what about the other 2,000 people that are <laughs> being like, oh, cool, I'm going to stand behind the soundboard back here so I don't get punched in the face. Point, counterpoint. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, uh, I think that it also, not that this should matter to the person on the ground in any significant way, but it is worth noting that we talk about mystique a lot and why so many acts have none. And I think the photo element is real. I think 100%. the fact that I think the fact that nobody take no those turnstile photos from the other day were fantastic. No idea who the photographer Angela is. Angela Owens. Out, shout out to Angela Owens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the pho- the photos are great. Makes it look like a time of a lot of people's life, and also it makes turnstile look like the biggest fucking band yeah. in the world. And you want to be part of that exactly. Yeah. And it makes you feel a way when you take a photo. Fo- I haven't seen a good photographic depiction of moshing in. 15 fucking years I don't like, know if I've ever seen it I, like, I was just kind of giving it the benefit of the yeah doubt. I appreciate that unless it's like some cool like there's Jimmy Gestapo doing the creepy right. crawl in 1981 at fucking A7 mm-hmm. but there's I, nobody doing it cool like you, we all look like idiots yeah d- does anybody have a, a this is wow this is we can go I thought the nerdiest conversation was going to be that Mina ver, Mina uh, versus Dwight, Dwight. Yeah. I, uh, which again Excellent. I was wrong because so many people engaged in that fucking poll. Oh, and, but, and where are we at? Uh, I think Dwid's going to win. Had 161 votes. It's like 15 minutes left. And Dwid's going to win 52% to 48%. So that it's is close. fucking close. That's so, cool, man. Because honestly, Mina singing is more interesting. Dwid is more of a for sure. Like, this would be all right. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, but the nerdiest, have you... Have you in many, many years seen anybody that's brought anything to dance? <laughs> like, like, have you like brought- anything new? Like the yeah. Michael Flatley of New yeah, York Hardcore? Sh- show me something new. No. No, right? No. I, I'm like borderline. Like, so, so we got asked to talk about like who's the best moshers of today. Yeah, what is this, like a Drew Stone interview, no, no, right? No, no <laughs> right. And it's just boring to me, honestly. Like, right. I mean, because it, it just be if feels somebody could so. Do it. No, it just feels trope in a way that's like. Yeah, you know what? If we're talking organically, yeah. it's like, yo, do you remember that one, dude? Oh, yeah. Right. But when you're having a start conversation about it, like, this yeah, is the yeah. best. It's just like, come on. We're just generating Have you ever that. seen Mike body stage dive? Because he can really stage dive. Well, do you know what? He really though? can. Honestly. He's fantastic. But that's but the thing. I, a dude who can get off. Body can really stage dive. He really can. I give him fucking credit. Uh, little Brandon can really stage dive. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, that's cool. Like. But it's not like they're like, did you see that fucking move that dude pulled off? The only moves that are, are like people are going like, oh, you're taking your life in your own hand with 17 other people. <laughs> right. Like there's no like, that was sick. It was like, oh, you're jumping from something. You're jumping from a fucking stack of, of amps that could kill somebody. That's pretty much the only new thing under the sun. Even uh, though it's not you know, I, I don't know. I, I just because uh, I want to give the benefit of the doubt to the weirdo Midwest VFW Hall kid that just really does want to dance hard. I want to give right. the benefit of the doubt. And there's room doubt. for that. And there Absolutely. always has been. Absolutely. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like we're going to like, you know, you go to any show, you know, a brick show. Kids are modern, but there's kids up front too. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? It's a nice mixture. I, I'm an upfront sort of guy. Maybe it's because I'm frail. No, that totally makes sense though. And I think, you know... If you think of all the iconic photos, even more recent ones, like think of like the Greg Trial one that Matt Miller took, mm-hmm. him standing there like fucking Jesus, like part in the goddamn Red Sea or whatever. There's you know a sold out Metro, like fucking freaking out. There's no mosh. It's just kids singing, and it looks like the most amazing thing. Like those dudes were able to tour after that because of that fucking photo. Uh, and that, and quite that, honestly, that's a real thing that happens. Also, I would like to uh, let the record show that Patrick doesn't understand Trial at all. Uh, so, okay. so bad man. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I'm going to listen to Are These Our Lives again for the 80th time in my life to see if it connects. But uh, Patrick does not understand trial. Uh, but, I like how you speak to yourself like that. <laughs> but, but Patrick loves Aline. <laughs> so Sorry. the uh, yeah, I I want to I want to humor that kid that responded and said, "Let me dance how I want, fucking old man." Yeah, I mean, there's definitely there's room for that. There's definitely room for that, and there's shows for that. Yeah, uh, are there any more? I mean, I feel like for like every, Mosh Hard or Die like, show. I feel like every show has become that. Is there a show that is for that? Yes, okay. and I think also you're thinking about these places that are like too big for the shows that are happening yes, there. Yes, that is, there's rooms to move. Like, that's the best point. As we're talking about Black and Blue Bowl, you know, during Mad Ball, there will be nowhere to go. Yeah, correct. It's going to be that crowded. There will be no fuck, fuck you horseshoe. It's nope. going to be, as people like to say, a mosh to survive kind of situation. Yes. 
those are the best shows. Yes. But I think like, you know, if you're having a place, you know, playing a giant place that fits 3,000 people and you got 1,500, there's a lot of fucking room for people to be like, I'm going to just go stand in the back. Yeah. I'm going to go see another merch table. I'm going to get a beer. I'm not going to stand near this because I don't want to get punched in the face. I think it's like it's narrowed down the people that are actually enjoying themselves to like from 100% to 30%. You know, the only time that you'll see me mosh is when walking down clearly <laughs> no is, that's the albany show is, yeah. is when something opens up near me and i'm scared and i have to mosh my way it's a mosh to survive yeah right. so <laughs> to me with all this conversation i think the the cool style is that there's a place for the people who want to go up front and sing along because they're passionate about singing along they like to sing along to the bands and they care yeah and then there's also room for people who are into moshing because they also care about these songs with this yeah. way. And then there's also space for people to watch and be engaged, but perhaps not an active participant. Um, it enables a lot of different activity as we see at this turnstile show or, or at many knock loose shows from these videos yeah. where, oh, there's people up front, which means kids can stage dive. There's right. people up front, so there's a bunch of people singing along in an active way. And there's room for people to mosh behind it. So it's just... Yeah. I don't really even like talking about like horseshoes or this or that. It's, you know, it evolves. It's, I've kind of been seeing it since I started going to shows, you know, which is the mid 90s. See, I thought about this a lot. Now, after you said that it doesn't interest you, I'm going to go deep. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah, this sucks. Here's 10 yeah, more no, minutes. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Here's my type 25. Uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, I thought about it because uh, it occurred to me that. The space that I first started going to shows in uh, was too small to warrant mm. this. And just as Tom said, a lot of sh- when when hardcore became even more maybe balkanized, corporate, uh, it, like, well, <laughs> even oi, uh, it, sorry, it uh, you had these scenes that are technically not sustainable. There's not enough people to fill a room, right? right. And that can just be you know, the function of your geography or whatever else, or it could be the fact that you are weirdly tribal in your area and refuse to uh, attend a show that is not exactly to your liking or (laughs) whatever the fuck. Now, uh, but I'm grateful for that space that was, uh, you played the QE2. What what was that? Maybe 200, like same kind of... Maybe 200. Including the bar. You know what I mean? Right, it was such a weird, like it had a venue with like, they had bars built in in front of the stage, which I thought was normal. Because it was I kind didn't of know anybody. yeah, but that was like everyone would just stage die from that. Yep. It was like kind of weirdly catty corner. It was like a very strange setup, very strange venue. But it was fucking fantastic. Like that was like your home. Yeah, CBGBs. There was no farky horseshoe. There was a twenty five by twenty five foot dance floor. Yeah, or you stood in the back. Yeah, you know what I mean. Think about the CBs shows where people weren't up front. You feel bad. It wasn't a horseshoe, but there would be, you might have a couple solo moshers, and it had that similar element of the quote unquote forky horseshoe. It's just that the room literally wasn't laid out in a way that you could actually horseshoe out. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. But it's more disinterest than, I, yeah, at least that, like you were saying, true. like you notice it from the 90s. Yeah. If you were going to a show in 98 and it was like that, you'd be like, how does. Band's yeah, not over. Beat. Yeah, it's beat. Band's not, you know what I mean? Well, and, and the only comparison I'll make is that when I did go, like to me, when I went to actual hardcore shows, you had people up front and singing along. But then if I went to the more beat downy or heavier or ignorant or metal type shows, you would get that. There weren't a lot of people up front at Fury of Five shows in New Jersey. I believe that. And there were a lot of people just getting hurt <laughs> if they were too close that. to the pit. So, Did you go to, speaking of Fury of Five, did mm-hmm. you go to Alive and Well? Yeah. That was legitimately one of the craziest things I had ever seen. I was not there. Do you want it- to describe it? Um, it was a huge hardcore festival, kind of like a precursor to what goes on now. I cite it a lot. It's um, 1998. Eight, August of 98. Uh, so it was at Convention was Hall well. and then at the Casino Skate Park, one yes. of my most loved venues. And place. so the second second night was uh, at Casino Skate Park. It was like Burn, Floor Punch. Breakdown? Breakdown, Vision, Ensign, uh, an, early, Ensign an Early Saves the Day show. A bunch of stuff. Yeah. Oh, no, maybe an early Kid Dynamite show. I don't know. Was, yeah, I do. Yeah. But Something. like the other show was like a big fucking. Was Misfits. Sick of it all. Sick Misfits. of it all. Better than a thousand. Earth Crisis. Fury of Five. It was, yeah. Huge. If you pull up the line, you should actually pull up the line. It's crazy. Um, the funny, a good story about that, because I am comic relief sometimes. They, so uh, it was the Graves era of Misfits. Yes, Michael Graves. So say they were supposed to go on 10 o'clock. 
Michael Graves is up there. Doyle's up there. Fucking Jerry Only's up there. They started without the drummer because they couldn't find him. And apparently he was taking a dump. And they're like, one, two, three, four. And they played a Misfit song or two without a drummer. <laughs> Headlining the convention hall in Asbury Park, which is probably about 3,000 people. Seven seconds played. Seven Underdog seconds. played. That's right. Those were, yep. It was a great fucking show. So talk about the Fury 5 set. Fury 5 was just insane. Because um, it was like their hometown. So everybody just went absolutely apeshit. I remember watching from behind one of the amps because somehow I was friendly with Fury Five guys, and uh, I watched the dude from E Town Concrete like throw like fling CDs out to the crowd, and I watched like the parabola of one like leaving his hand, smash some <laughs> dude right in the face. Kid was not paying attention, caught all all of a fucking E Town Concrete record right to the face, destroyed him. He was bleeding. But yeah, Fury of Five was legitimately one of the biggest reactions to this day that I have ever seen a band get. No shit. It was bonkers. And violent. Violent, mostly. Yeah. I mean, that was really, yeah. And and the thing was that it was a lot of Fury of Five fans and a lot of not Fury of Five fans, per se. Yeah. And the Fury of Five fans in the went nuts. It was crazy. It was just, crazy yeah. and scary. But, yeah. but, you know, no diss, like props to Fury of Five. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you party have that? of V as we called them um, <laughs> so the, I'm sorry yeah I don't know it's it's got the it's lot, all got different the and it changes as we go you know the yeah. evolution of how this but you know as dudes in, in as as singers in bands yeah. do you and Pat's kind of mentioned this he doesn't like the sing along the grab and sing along Pat have you ever had an experience where you had a large group of people singing your songs back at you and how did that feel uh i mean probably the closest for that is drug church uh, uh -huh. on some of the fests that we get put on goes over yeah. pretty well and uh you that has to feel good it's awesome dude I, you, you, right i'm gonna say something crazy uh, i hate this shit <laughs> no i don't hate this shit i just i've made a point of uh, people have wanted to sing along for self to self-defense for a long time and i've never handed out the mic maybe once uh I mean, maybe not once and, and like ever, ever. And, uh, as a result, like, uh, you know, partly because I'm on that art tip where it's like, uh, this is mine. like, yeah, this is mine. Uh, and I want you to enjoy yourself, but, uh, like, don't pick up a paint. Don't pick up a paintbrush, bro. Yeah. yeah no, like, I mean, this is mine. Exactly. Right. You can, uh, you're and, a gallery. And that's kind of how I've, conducted myself in self-defense right and i think it flies for that band because people view that band a certain way like oh, okay like this dude's off on this thing but, right but for drug church it's more of a sing-along kind of fun kind it of, is yeah, yeah. It's, it's like i always describe it I, I, it's for people that want to have fun so like right it, it's uh, wait and you're not the four you're is it four people in the band or five five and it's four people who want to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know what though. And Pat. I, I, with drug church, I as as much as I want to give off like a, a kind of a, like a fuck you attitude. A fuck you attitude with with. Well, that's what I wanted at the beginning of drug church. But my bandmates are just too nice. It's like they you know they're right. smiling. And the they fuck. write fun songs. Yeah, so you exactly. Can't really what be the like... fuck can I do? If anybody does want to start my like you know. Uh, my cows style fuck you oh. band or something like that. I have no path of resistance band. You said that you uh, are too decrepit to do hardcore. No, I'll do it. We yeah. talked about Jeremy. I you know, and I. but the other I'm day, down. The other day in the car, you were like, I don't know. I'm. Uh, I'll do a project. It was late. Okay, it right, was late, right, and he was ranking. speaking out of pocket. Okay, yeah. All right. All right. Then I can't be like the guy that's like, here's my new hardcore band. I'm 42. But if it's like, hey, here's a band with me and my friends doing like fun stuff, I could do that. I mean, yes. You know what would be fun, honestly, is I think a, I think a hardcore band like a straight up either Path of Resistance or yeah. something a little crustier. I. Uh, with both of us would be super fun under this condition that it is objectively better than all of its contemporaries. Like if we really killed it, I think that that would be so worthwhile just because I think it is so fucking fun to demonstrate. Like a point. we hold this. Now. All right, yeah. I will. I will. I will be a QC on it. And if it doesn't it's pass true. a QC, Bob then will not you gotta. Front. No, I won't front, especially not in that style. I and mean, we don't have talent, but we yeah, have people. Guys, we know yeah. people that do have talent. Well, oh, and I, you guys can kill the track, I think and we, you're gonna have to yeah. bring it. I think we could put together a dream team. But that's I, true. But I just, I, you guys, tell me if I'm wrong. I think 
doing something better than everybody is so rewarding. Like even if nobody else knows or gets it or whatever, because no one else recognizes that it's better than everything. I, I mean, honestly, like, like at this point you and I don't need the validation of being like in a band. That's cool. Yeah. At yeah. all. So it's like, it's just really, why like, start now? Like, <laughs> but, but, but Tom, I know because I printed hundreds of most precious blood shirts, whoop, whoop, tons with my of face people, on it. not your face, but your hand up microphone out. Yeah. And, what looks like two or three hundred people, and it could have been that many, or yeah. maybe it's fifty, but it's a great photo. Yeah. Singing your word, singing words back to you. Sure, awesome feeling, right? The best feeling, right? I'd rather have no one mosh. If yes, given my right. druthers, you're like, pick your favorite show. Like it'd be like everyone crammed in the room, everyone knows the words, everyone's having a good time, no one feels at risk. That's really, really like. Yeah. We've played shows that it was like we probably shouldn't be playing this place, but like we played a, a bar called Matchless in Greenpoint, mm-hmm. us and Incendiary. Place fits 150 people. We got like 300 people in that room. Yeah, <laughs> people as far as you can see. But everyone to this day, everyone's like, "That's the best time I've ever seen in decision." Yeah, I mean, people want. To, okay, so this is actually a, a larger point yeah. that I I've talked to somebody about the other day, uh, my booking agent, about underplays. Uh, underplays are kind of becoming more and more popular because people so re- cool people right. realize what it's doing for their fucking look it's are they the underplays optics. anymore though and, no, okay let's talk about oh, it like, I'm not no, trying to be a dick no but let's like, talk about it that's a great question I'm gonna you know alright I'll do it for the kids but meanwhile I was like can okay. you do any bigger okay, no so, I think it's but it's both sides it's both sides oh, because sure. the optics of it look so good L- let's, when you're let's playing that room let's explain though real quick yes uh, so okay so to uh, to people that aren't you know whatever um, some of the jargon this borders on like corporate lingo but it's also just something that's kind of neat to talk about yeah like when yeah. you see a band that you're like i can't believe this band is playing here instead of here right now it's an underplay th- that's yeah. what an underplay is an underplay is uh one of two things is either your favorite band being real cool and realize that they're doing it for their fans and that two nights in a small space is way, way more cool. fun sure. yeah or it's a cynical look on the part of their booking agent to say, uh, "Look, y- your numbers are a little soft in this town." Right. It's like a rehab job. It is. Right? It is. It's. It's. Uh, so sometimes you'll see these large metalcore acts do like the for the fans fest or for the fans tour that yeah. like plays three hundred caps where they used to do th- six hundred caps, and this is a massaging of of a problem. The problem is, hey, you're in a, you're in a down period of your career. Uh, we need it to look cool and for everybody that comes out to this thing to remember it as cool. Right. You know what I mean? To have a good time. And so here's the deal. Uh, it, it, whichever one of those it is, it still amounts yeah. to a funner show. A for funner the, show. For the people on the other. Yeah. And better photos. And yeah. just like, I mean, I would love to have Angela Owens come on our podcast because her photos make people look iconic and it makes me go, whether I want to like, whether I've heard the band or not, go. I want to like that band because that photo looks so cool. Yeah. There's a photo from last night. And we kind of circle all the way back to the beginning of the episode two and so we do almost three hours ago uh, of Brandon from Turnstile stage diving, and it's just him holding the mic, jumping in the crowd, and he looks he's straight Superman in the air over the crowd and it's just like oh so and it's cool. yeah. day it's the day after and that's already like oh that's the that's the visual image i have of turnstile now right, right. <laughs> and so and because you play these smaller rooms better photos it's just great and yeah. so that is an interesting way for the optics and as pat kind of went through older bands who are in a lull you do this and you build it up and it looks oh shit see people still care about band x in shreveport louisiana Sure, <laughs> because they played a room to that can fit eighty people. Right. Yeah, and, and uh, it's a thing that is becoming uh, more popular uh, as booking agents are realizing that uh, it has uh, it has value. Uh, right. People don't go to shows as much anymore. Correct. I mean, for straight anybody, up, straight up, you have to you have to have a marshmallow. You have to have a marshmallow on your head and be DJing like with right. a light show. Bands that played Giant Stadium ten years ago are like. Maybe play in the garden. Like it's, you know, a third of the size just because that's all they can do now. Right. I mean, it's, you know, people just, it's just not as like the thing to do anymore. Not even in hardcore, just in general. Sure. Like rock music is, yeah, we're, we're you know, guitar in the music throws. is ass. And it, people, it's just toilet now. And people want something new. And I mean, that's the one part about hardcore and punk that has always been cool is the live elements, always been a huge part of it. 
because it should be adding something that you can't get from sure. recordings. Yeah. And I'm a hard person to ask this to because it's like at 36, I am absolutely less interested in live music than I was at 26, 24, 2018. I posted a photo yesterday of me drive with a friend's driving when we drove when we were 18 to Minneapolis I was still in high school we left I think I got out of school on a Friday and we drove and I came back like and people were like oh where were you this weekend I was like Minneapolis and they're like what'd you go with your family I was like no me and my friends drove there like, right, like and that was awesome a friend of mine was like oh I saw this awesome show last night in Philly it's playing New York tomorrow night you should go and I was like no that's not gonna happen <laughs> it would have to, it would, I mean are you paying me and I don't mean that in a mean way it's just Live music doesn't have the same appeal to me at my age, and I hope that's not. I hope that's a me problem and not epidemic. Right, I think it might be an epidemic, unfortunately. Mm. Now, do you mean hardcore or music in general? Like, is hardcore in that or like all music? That- but I mean, there's very few. Can, can I'll ask this question in the room? Sure. Did hardcore? I think you might be good for this, but hardcore's kind of ruined most live music for me oh for sure i was just gonna say okay. that actually yeah. because I, I i you know going and sitting down for a rock concert is the yeah. least appealing thing in the world and then standing and just kind of standing seems like if i could lay down outside and kind of catch you yeah i might be into that yeah but, right like but hardcore's whole... ruined live music for me so. oh yeah and i think if you think about it any like rock band that you like if you look kind of like into the history they're all punk and hardcore kids Oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah. not like ELO or Led Zeppelin. <laughs> no, no, like, but like bit. current day, like <laughs> Death Cab. I'm a Death Cab oh, for sure, sure, sure. Right when they started, they used to cover Undertow. <laughs> Is that real? Yes, you know, or like Lucero. One of the guys from Lucero was a, a raid guy from fucking right. Memphis, <laughs> and he has a fucking a hardline vegan straight edge tattoo on his leg. That's a weird. Life, so it's life kind of trajectory. like. But those bands can still kind of pull it off. But like, you can't go sit like unless it's like a fucking iconic, you know. All right, I'm showing my age and my region. But like, I could go see Bruce Springsteen play for three hours. But I'm not or you two or whatever the fuck. I, I, I would prefer to be laying down outside. On sure. A sunny day watching that. Right. But, but yeah. I mean, I think for the most part, like I'm not trying to sit somewhere for two hours in a fucking chair no. and watch. You know, unless it's my house. <laughs> yeah, and even then, I don't really want to watch live music. Or like Paramore is a good example. They used to cover end of a year. That, it's true. This is true. <laughs> uh, uh, no, we are going good live act. At some point, we are going to go into my theory that Paramore ruined uh, guitar music. You have such a good axe to grind. We're not going to do it now because no. it's 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 a much it's yeah, it's a twenty five minute take. Yeah, at this least. might be Patreon. At least, yeah, at least. <laughs> then we can get Haley to pay for some because she's going to want to hear it. Shout out to Haley. I appreciate learn. her as an artist, a human, very talented uh, I like, human being. I like Paramore. I'd send her to jail if I could. And 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 you know what? When I signed end of year, I was like, you know what? I need my Paramore. <laughs> and that's you know, I got it. Like, I got it, baby. <laughs> I mean, it, like the same thing. It should have been a solo act. Pat didn't want to be a solo <laughs> act. So he's like, let me start this band. Not like, yet. Wink, wink, nudge, what nudge. What you don't understand is that the 2018 year is, um, we've got a couple of good wheels in place. And and his other people don't know this. I actually manage Pat Kinlan. Patrick Kinlan. Uh, Patrick, yeah. So we are working on his solo. His solo EP comes out next Q3 next year. <laughs> Um, it's an EPK. Q3, Q3, get it? Q3. Q3. And <laughs> the, um, the full length is going to come out kind of in this weird drop 2021. Oh, I respect it. Yeah, it's a long right term before, it's a long-term plan. Sh- right Slow before burn. the uh, acoustic remnants of Warp Tour 2021 hits, which and is like a whole new it. thing. It's, it's, it's going to be great. Anyways, like all those bands It's had going big. Up. I respect that. Yeah, long term plan. I've also seen Paramore, and I back Bob on the Paramore love. I saw yeah, them at good. the Garden with Metric, and they were fantastic. Great energy. I'd put her in handcuffs, put her in the back of a prison bus, and drive her directly to Rikers if I could. <laughs> and uh, I could get her out for work. Uh, so uh, we promised mailbag questions. I think we're going to wrap it. Okay. Do you want to do a couple more? Do we have any more? We have yeah, some like we quick didn't ones? answer any mailbag questions. <laughs> <laughs> we did one, didn't we? No, that no, we was did our own. That was our. That was our own. You know what I want to do? No, you know what I want to do is that we were talking about the life of agony thing. You had front row seats for life of agony formative years. Yeah, the that, fucking gut. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's interesting as hell to me because where I think Pat probably is with me on this. Um, they end up in a place to me that's like hardcore, hardcore adjacent metal. But they certainly started a place 
dead on hardcore. Oh, absolutely. So you started seeing them. Yeah, I mean, like second demo. So the first demo was straight up uh, sheer terror worship. And like you see the pictures, they're on like flight jackets, shaved heads, like straight up fucking like colorblind and like step aside. It was like full on like, oh, this could be Paul Bearer for all you know. Yeah. And then the river, the the Stain Remains demo was like when they were kind of turning over, um, which a lot of those songs ended up being on River Runs Red. Uh, clearly not to produce as well. Mina definitely went to like some kind of like vocal coach in the meantime because her vocals on the LP are like blow away the ones on the demo, whatever. Um, for me personally, like I had seen them like during the second demo, like I saw like their like show after they got signed. Okay. You know what I mean? Like the whole like, yeah, you know, they made it, you know? And like back then they had a keyboard uh, in the band. So like Mina would play keyboard and this like weird like throne that was the life of agony symbol. Like they, uh, a podium. A podium, yeah, for like, yeah, not a throne. Like a, th- like a podium with the Life of Agony symbol. That was like definitely like somebody in the band made it or like someone, it was like a wood shop thing. Yeah. <laughs> so once they got signed to Roadrunner, they Bonus like points. destroyed it like on stage. Like yeah, it was, was like a thing. Yeah, it was, it was like, yeah, you know, like. We can buy a new one. Yeah, like, <laughs> but they never played keyboards again. After oh, that. really? So then um, like a, b- me, a bunch of my friends and I, we went to like the River Runs Red record release show. Wild. Where was that? Lemoore's. Okay, sure. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I yeah. know. Like he said it like so obviously. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Where else did they? Play? I don't know That's if right. I've ever seen them until like this new go around anywhere but Lemoore's. That's amazing. If I'm really thinking about it. Yeah. Um. And then like they did really well. Like they did like uh, a two night like stand at Lemoore's in '94. Okay. With like doggy dog. Right, <gasps> and it's band called Stomp Box from oh Boston. yeah, yep. very familiar. Trey McCarthy's gonna if you listen, yeah. <laughs> shout out Stomp, Stomp Box, Box from Boston. Um, you know, crazy sold out both nights, nuts. They kind of like they kept going on and like more and more. It'd be like oh, like they're on tour with Ozzy or they're on tour with these bands like that. I you know playing arenas and stuff. I kind of lost touch with them. Like I liked the second record, Ugly, but then after that it was kind of like I could take it or leave it. Right, and they kind of got so big. Like, I'd never seen them in an arena or, like, anything like that. And then... It's Lemoore's or nothing for you. Yeah, like, so, unfortunately, <laughs> when they... Yeah, exactly. Sellouts. No, um, they were, Mina left the band, and they had the singer from Ugly Kid Joe sing for them. Oh! That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, never on any records. And people wonder why, like, there's some weird associations with Life of Agony yeah. as a band in a, as a whole, not just a specific era. Right. I mean, that dude can sing. Sure. That dude always reminded me, and back me... He reminded me like he stole Jimmy Gestapo. I feel like that he sounds like. Uh, listen oh, yeah, to right. I, I hate everything about you. That's no, fucking Jimmy right. Gestapo. You're he ripped totally him off. right. I mean, he kind of dressed like Jimmy actually. Yeah, he, he swagger jacked. Jimmy. Yeah, I really yeah. think I'm That's not a even good kidding. Point. So I never got to see them with him. Um, and like then, like the lineup changed. Like the drummer was different. They had the guy from like Propane play and all this sort of stuff. And then they broke up. I think. Yeah, and then they came back. They did a reunion in like the early 2000s, mm-hmm. put out a record, kind of went away for a little bit, and then came back with this new thing. And then... And you saw them recently and said it was good? I saw them... What was the most recent time? I saw them with Biohazard VOD at the PlayStation Theater. Packed. <laughs> Which they should have just put a, a banner... Lamore, come they on. should have put a banner over PlayStation there. Lamore, yeah, 2K. Yeah, one night only, bro. Yeah. Um, and then I saw them at... I don't know the wick, the well, the fucking place near. I don't know what it's called. It's called the wick and the well. I don't know the I, wizard, the witch, and the yes. wardrobe, whatever. I, I just nobody I, beats the wiz. I'm still reeling at the lack of dignity in Biohazard at the PlayStation Arena. You was, know what I mean, or PlayStation Theater. Like yeah, that, I mean, the, the, but that combination of words is like weird. Yeah. That's like Jimmy's Chicken Shack at the Taco Bell. Uh, you, you know, on Route I mean? Nine, it's a 2100 capacity room, and it was packed. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I believe sure. it. Sure. Um, and then they played whatever the wick, the well. Um, the place over in Bushwick. I, I think yeah. it's the well with the wick. Whatever the fuck. They did two nights there. And it was like they're coming back like after like she had kind of come out and she started mm-hmm. to transition all this sort of stuff. And like yeah. the reaction that they got. I went in there awesome. being like, I'm definitely going to get in a fight because someone's going to say something stupid. And then me and my like four friends are going to like fight like Hessians and fucking leather cuffs because they're going to be dicks. 
they were so incredible to her and like chanting her name in between songs and then I think one of the most uncomfortable things in the world is the expectation that somebody's going to say something that is over the line for you I hate that feeling the feeling yeah, like I went into that I'm like I this is not going to be good because I, it, the line for me is way further than most people you can get yeah. away with a lot of shit in front of me and like that sweat that you get when you're like, mm. you're going to make me say something to you? I yeah. hate you. Like, I'm going to have to put you in a fucking headlock. I, I had to you. do it on the PATH train not long ago when some fucking shitball, like, banker from lower Manhattan, sure. some some dude who was, you know, a, a Mexican guy, I don't know, yeah. you know, uh, was tired. He, was, he, he, like, hunched over. This dude just starts giving him the business. And he's like, hey, hey, stand up. Stand up. You don't do that. And I'm like... I'm giving him death glare. I'm like, dude, stop. Just stop. I'm glaring. And he keeps going. And the guy find, and the guy is a lot smaller. Right. And clearly he's by himself. So finally I turn to the guy. I'm like, yo, man, shut up. Right. Leave him alone. Leave change. him alone. Right. Just leave him alone. And he tried to talk. I was like, no, just leave him alone yeah. Yeah, and raise leave. my voice. Right. And I feel bad. I, but it was like insane. I did it a lot because I had that feeling. I had that sweat. I hate the sweat. It's the worst. Yeah, I like, hate I'm going to have to change this dude's channel. I hate the sweat. Copyright Brian Odley. There's change people, that there's people, channel. There's people, there's people that live for the sweat, though. The, the Lots of I, mean, people. I don't enjoy I don't. that shit, but I'm like, I'll, you know, if, if someone's being a dick to her, I would be like, I'm going to fucking do something. No, gonna, yo, it's a lot cooler to have to deal with the sweat and be the dude who says something to shut that down yeah. than, than make fun of the bodied girl on the internet. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, she went like, and then I saw their record release show for the new record at uh, Irvin Plaza, and they were great. Uh, quick thing on Stompbox: yeah, Trey McCarthy says they were our quicksand, major major label failing. Oh. Wow. Okay, I was like, <laughs> are you really putting them on the same level as quicksand? No, okay. no. I think our quicksand is the Boston Rage version. So I feel like they, they were on tree. like, uh, what were they? Ask them what they were on. Like picture. Uh, what was that? Oh fuck. Disco Rama. No. Wonder Drug. Uh, Some place they used to you somewhere could, between Wonder Ro- Drug and uh, Wonder and and, and Rock Rama. They there was some <laughs> label that some place that like you could get CDs made, but they also released CDs. And I feel like That's they right. put out Tree and Stompbox and oh. those types of bands, He'll like know. Newberry Comics label but, uh, or something. No, but yeah, yeah, no, but it was like an actual like. Oh, I want to do like you know a hundred press CD. I can go to Joe Schmo's Chicken Shack and then they'd make them for you. But they also oh, had a label yeah, tied yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah. So quick yeah, thing. Sorry. No, no, no. We're, Life of Agony. Yeah. Being someone from first wave fan, seeing them. Sure. Was it weird when you would see them later? And as you described, like, oh, clearly they've attracted a fan base that is not of my world. I think from the get-go, they attracted a fan base that was not necessarily of my world. Right, Lamoris. To be quite honest with you, it's like those kids did not go like, I love the Cro-Mags. There were some that obviously did, but I think it wasn't like... They weren't like a, a band that got people into hardcore. They just happened to be a band that was like from the neighborhood, right? That did really well. That makes sense. You know what I mean? And like they'd have back then, they'd have hardcore bands play with them. They don't do that so much now. But I've heard that uh, if you saw them play a show with a lot of hardcore bands, some point in the not too distant future, nothing pending, but it's not something they would say no to. Oh, okay, pretty interesting. So that's a hand. Uh, so, anyways, um, yes, I, I think we're wrapping here. Um, uh, Wonder Drug was the one that uh, put out Stompbox and uh, also Tree, also Subsidi- Why do subsidiary I of Columbia, maybe. Was it? I don't know. Because Stompbox was definitely a major label band at one point. I think they got signed to Tree uh, or to Columbia. So, Scissor Fight was on this label. I don't know if you remember that. We talked about them. Yeah, you were okay. a couple yeah, of podcasts we, we, back. We've, we've been, we're big up in Wonder Drug. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little did we know we were talking all about Wonder Drug. We had no idea that we're uh, secretly raising the Spotify listens for Slug Hog. Slug Hog? I don't even know that one. Yeah, that was like the noise rock band of the uh, Wonder Drug family. I prefer Hog Jaw from uh, New Orleans. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Anything else we want to talk on? Are we good? Did for we uh, did we give enough? I feel like we gave a lot. We went in so many different directions. Give all. Like, give, give everything. everything. <laughs> give. Look, my my partner asked, "What are you guys going to talk about tonight?" And I jokingly always just say, "Bane." Bane. I mean, Bane. invariably, and then they she's will like, come "I'm up. going to listen to your podcast someday." So she hasn't yeah. supported us yet. It's been she tried. She tried. She's she just tried. busy. <laughs> she ain't true. got time for these podcasts. I ain't got time for that. All right. Here's a question. I would like to know if we can put it out there to our. People that are listening. Sure. Esteemed audience. What's the sweet spot 
for how long you want these goddamn oh, episodes God. to People go. People have been telling us three hours. Okay, because I've had friends that are like, this thing is fucking three hours. I'm like, that's what people enjoy. Yeah, it's weird. I can I, give you an hour. It's weird. Our ratings, hours. our ratings on the long ones are better. Our ratings, our our listens are better. And I've also, friends, <laughs> our, 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 I've also had friends. I've also had friends who are like, can you just do a solid hour and a half because that's how long my ride is home. So. Break it up. Shout out, shout out, friend who drives home late. You know, but you can always break it up and just be like, yeah. it's like leave it as a cliffhanger. Yeah, Surprise exactly. yourself. That's what podcasts are. But yeah, if you've got op- opinions on our length, go for it. Uh, five star <laughs> reviews. <laughs> Please give us opinions on our length. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we do that all night. I, um, I, I like two hours, but I also have a day where I can like the the first half of my day I can listen to three hours solid. So this like same. It, like we don't shoot for three. hours. It just so happens that we're like definitely not. We just ramble. Yeah. yeah, I think we're, you know Bob keeps us on point. Like if it wasn't for Bob, it would be three hours of like inane ramblings of two madmen. To be quite honest with you, no. Pat's done. Pat's pretty good at keeping us going too. We we all just kind of try to keep the ball moving. But if you guys catch us, hit us. Feedback's always appreciated, especially when attached to a five star review on iTunes. Yeah. Yeah. Like what's that golden ratio? What do you want? It's like two hours and like thirty two <laughs> minutes. It's like this is perfect. We love specifics. You know. Uh, and I recognize that I talk a lot on this thing because I sometimes edit them, and I'll, so I'll move, I'll check around, I'll right. just move it. And it's always you. It's always me talking. So. I mean, you're the straw that stirs the drink. Let's well, be realistic. That's I, I have a disease. You should see me in uh, like college courses and shit. I don't want to talk. I don't know as much as anybody in the classroom. I'm just like, have you ever watched a professor? Yeah. I know. In a Struggle? silent room? Yeah, no, oh, it's bad. And you go, I, I'm going to, all right, I'm just going to say Yeah, you're like, I'll, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. You're like the friend that goes along to sing along for the your friend's band. Yeah, yeah, So there's yeah. one person being into it. Yeah. You go, I right, fuck, I just got to take one from And we got, yeah, I think we got a room of at least two and a half. Because I think you're half there, but you know. Like, of what? Of the person who will talk if no one's talking. Yeah, I, I feel so, I'm like, fuck, this is so awkward. Yeah, yeah. You're only the quiet person when in the room with the two of us. I'll laugh, dude. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. Hey, ah, right. ah. It's kind of like, that was a good joke, prof. Wait, I got, I got a question. <laughs> I got a prof question. shed. That was great. <laughs> I got a question to yeah. end, to end this. Yes. Uh, Is this like a cliffhanger? Like tune in next time yeah, for the answer. No, it's going to be like the drop. I'm going to. Be- no. <laughs> Although we're going to end this we soprano should, style. We should start doing very broad episodes where we do like top ten records and just do three a piece and just drop those in every yeah. once in a while. You know I think I mean? we've got plans for that. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you're out gallivanting around the world while me and Bob are oh, tethered to bad. the shore so, and to Queens. It's all right. So, I like the ocean. So yeah, sure, the here's, ocean's dope. here's my question. Uh, you said that uh, you're suffering from like kind of a, uh, l- a what do they call that? A malaise uh, as far as live music goes, right? I mean, it's a malaise that started when I was like 28, right. so that's fine. Uh, I mean, I, the couch is always better than anywhere you're going. I, I got a friend who makes an absurd amount of money booking live music that says that the last show he has to attend for career reasons will be the last live performance he He'll attends in to. his life ever. Like, well, I mean, I can understand being burned out, especially for you guys too. I mean, it's like yeah. you're on tour all the time. You've done a million things. Yeah. I've kind of like had like a rebirth that I'm not as horrified, but like I remember coming home from tour and be like, I've listened to hardcore for the last two months straight in a foreign country. I don't yeah. want to listen to anything anymore. I mean, I, I'm okay. So uh, I remember uh, I went into the uh, vegetarian restaurant that used to be on Lark Street uh, af- if, during a QE2 show that Sick of It All was playing. I go into the uh, restaurant to use the bathroom, I think. Sick of It All was in there eating, and I remember being like 16 yeah. and bummed out that they weren't watching the opening bands. <laughs> Uh, being like, oh, come on, sick of it all. Come on, dudes. And, and, yeah. and now you couldn't get me to watch an opening band if you had a gun pressed the side of my head. And, and that then- was the exact moment that Pat's pure young heart broke <laughs> and this little fucking troll doll <laughs> with green hair pops out. It's like, <laughs> the opposite of the Grinch. Your heart just shrunk. <laughs> I, I, but now I fully... I mean, by that point, they were a well-toured band for fucking a long time. He's right. texting sick of it all when he sees them side stage saying, what you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so, but, W-Y-D. But my question, like, I guess back to the thing, best live thing you've seen in the last year and a half, two years. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, give me a second on it because I'm thinking there has been stuff. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to not go nepotism on this. Sure. Because I could totally, you know. Yeah, you want to throw it to Crust. Stuff. You want to throw it to Yeah, whoever. I want to throw it to Bon Justice. You know, like, those are my homies. And that's that's a different thing. And you wouldn't be that's, wrong. No. Um, yeah. Okay, let me give you a couple. And there's another thing. I'll, I'll 
do the nepotism that the shows of the Brick EMS Hall, there's a familiarity there where it's a DIY setting mm -hmm. in my town where there's we, we do our best to try to level out the pretense and just have a fun time. Is that the where the Christmas shows were? Yes, correct. Okay, that's a great which, which are really fun. A lot of fun. Um, the EMS is literally crumbling in our town, and we're trying to convince them to let us just use it as a community center. Um, right, four punch on the floor at a hard. Yeah, it was cool. Fucking sick. Yeah. Um, leeway there to about 120 people, and was that was really fun. And just people moshing, everybody was just a good vibe. Um, outside of that. You know what? Okay. Uh, basement and turnstile at the TLA in Philly. It's a big show. Um, the energy was wild. And it was the moment when I got to see turnstile where like uh, somebody asked me, somebody, PJ, you're getting called out for this. It's some negative bullshit to say. Um, so you get on this. He's like, oh, you know what? The photos of that turnstile, he was on the way to Damage City. He's like, the photos from that turnstile show look wild because they were. And uh, he's like, you know, that's not my bag. But if you caught me in the right mood, I might have to mosh for that. It might go <laughs> off. And I was like, well, you know, uh, I'm not necessarily a tribesman myself. It's some riffs, though. But boy, that's a band who live. They are the most, I said it earlier, they're the most fun in that energy. And then, quite honestly, I don't think I was giving Basement their due. They followed up Turnstile, and I don't think there's many bands who could follow them up. And they killed it, and it was their crowd. We, okay. And if there were Turnstiles fans, they turned them too. They really? they won those fans. Are I they was like impressed very, by it. like interactive basement? Or are they more like the <sighs> no? But there was just thing. an energy, and the TLA has a fucking barrier, which uh -huh. I hate, you yeah. know. And both bands overcame the barrier with sure. energy, and it was awesome to see. Cool. Oh yes. Do you, do you have one in the last year and a half, two years? That and I was every... trying to to what's it called when uh, when you uh, talk a lot filibuster. Yes. I was filibustering a bit to try to allow for some thinking. Yeah, for the last year and a half, um, or two years, or three years. Sure. Pat, hmm. you got an answer? I do actually. I I, I, I uh, yeah. self defense. Uh, now I've. Are I've, you naming your own band? Well, we are the we are the premier fucking <laughs> We've live act. This but, one show, and it's... but. Uh, so I saw Turnstile a ton uh, because Drug Church has done a number of shows with them. They're always good. Enjoy seeing them literally every fucking time, really put on. Uh, but Self-Defense did a show with Oxbow that I, I really could not describe how much I enjoyed watching this band and the crowd. Like, the crowd was... You know, like kind of an art student-ish vibe, but, sure. but older. And so, like, look, anybody can be an art student at our student age. You know what I mean? Anybody. It's not a challenge. You're not fucking transgressive in any sort of way. <laughs> if you are still the art student at fucking like 36 and you are just a lifetime fucking weirdo Respect. who, and that was, that's Respect. the, that's the Oxbow fan. Yo, it was fucking cool. I had a great time. And do you know who I'm really looking forward to? The best show that I had seen before that in a number of years was killing joke. Yeah, Killing okay. Joke is doing another tour. They got to be fucking. I could probably punch my way through their chest. They're so fucking old, and they are fucking awesome. So live. two two notes based off this. Let's get you. Let's get self defense on some Killing Joke shows. I mean, a dream. A dream. Two. Where are they playing? In New York. I think they're playing Irving Plaza. Does that make sense? I might have some dreams. Yeah, he's got some guys. I got some guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> That would actually, I would go to that. I would buy tickets and sit down and watch that. Uh, two, we'd have to get a VIP. Yeah, of Strictly course. Good. Right to the front, to this table for <laughs> table. Professor Shed. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, table. Prof. Roart. Um, <laughs> Roart. Um, you have to wear Pat, a mascot. Drug Church has played with Turnstile any number of times. I want a self defense tour with Turnstile. I mean, I'll are they ready? Are the Turnstile fans ready? I think they're ready. Uh, you know what? I don't know. Uh, I think they're ready. The new for record's it. weird enough. Uh, I think you let's freak the freaks. Look, a band that has put on for self defense a lot is Touche Amore. They have invited us on tours, and only in the major markets do we fly. Mm -hmm. Like that, I mean, as soon as you put us in whatever the European version of Tulsa is, people are looking at us like we are pure ass. Stuttgart. Yeah. <laughs> so no, we got a base in Stuttgart. <laughs> Stuttgart's our fans. But, but, uh, you know, and, and it's a funny thing because uh, there's a number of, of generally hardcore bands who have put on for self-defense over the years and really tried to bring us into what they do. And 
we always pick up a few fringe fans and we it's always worth our time it's never like a complaint on our end but i do feel bad because as an opener goes we're a tiny bit challenging i would say you know what i mean it's not like bringing out fucking like daughters in their prime where they're like deep throat in the mic but it's like it can be a bit much for some people but i i think for that environment and it's a reason i think drug church also works is that you you're going for the throat you're not Uh, you're not backing down to the challenge oh no i mean give me the look (laughs) give me the microphone first so i can burst like a bubble yeah exactly like you know i mean bring it on but uh yeah, uh, self defense is a hard thing to book. Drug church is an easy thing to book. You can put it on with virtually anything. So give me, you know, a fucking a day to remember, or turnstile, or daughters. Oh, you know, and whatever. we filibuster just long enough. Yeah, well, you filibustered so much, then now I can't. Oh, you forgot. oh no, no, I have four. Oh okay. yeah, it's hits, perfect. Hits. That's great. All right, so, so we'll go like punk hardcore first. I'll lead off with my non punk or hardcore one, so you guys can like you, nobody will remember it. Nobody will make fun of me for it. Julian Baker at Town Hall. I listen to her music. She follows me on social media and likes my shit sometimes. Yeah. And I, uh, six, Humble brag. And I, yeah. No. Well, I'm reminded. She likes, she's down with indecision, by the way. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I'm always reminded, oh, I should check out her music. Also, because I do business with the 6131 guys. Sure. And they back her. And she sings on, a, on a Touche record. Oh, yes, is that, okay. she does. So, Skyscraper. So I also listened to her song Exploder today, which is her analyzing a song. Actually right? really good. It is interesting. Yeah. So at any rate. You guys should do that. I, I explored her music for the first time. It's still kind of not up my alley, but. Not your world. Uh, but I love how much. You love this artist. I, I agree. It, it radiates. Off it. I agree. I I went it. and checked her out after our first ep- sure. first episode. Yeah, when you talked on when her? we did the best of 2017, yeah. and I yeah. still didn't vibe didn't on it you. in a way. But I do. Your passion for her made me go. All right, I'm going to give everything she does a chance from here. I on. appreciate that. I just feel like if you like the Emma Ruth Rundle, Nicole Dowling ganger, ganger, who's got new music by the way, she does. Oh, but. Yeah. I mean, the lyrics are definitely not b- about being, yeah, d- you know, doused in yeah. stuff. Um, I just think she's like fantastic, and like I've never seen a person bring a sixteen hundred person venue to a fucking silence that was so it was so loud, it was so silent, it was incredible. Um, and she ended with, do you know pedal? Uh, yes, pedal? yes, yes. Big uh, fan. Do you? Huge. No shit. Uh, so they brought. The um, singer. It's, her name is um, Kylie. Kylie. Kylie Lotz. Um, and somebody from the, the band Half Wave, who's, who's always opening. Mm-hmm. And, and they did a, an acapella version of one of her songs to end mm. with no microphone and no accompaniment. And it was awesome. They literally started, and I, because I was doing like the, the what's happening, like rerunning what's happening. I was like bootlegging the show. I hear <laughs> myself go, holy fuck. Like, <laughs> on, that's like, awesome. It wasn't even like, it was just, I was just like so taken by it. So. I back that, and I think everyone should. Um, Cox Bar in Brooklyn at the Warsaw. Okay. One of the best rock bands you'll ever see. Right, that was big. I guess I got a question for you. I've never seen them. Are they great, or is the crowd great? Both. I mean, I know the crowd's great. They're great. Okay. They're great, and so I, I, the reviews, they played on that same thing. I think they played uh, Union Transfer in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And it was like people like one. That's a fantastic venue. Yes, sound is perfect. Yes, uh, all wood. It's just yeah. perfect. And Cox Bar just lit the place up. Yeah, like the crowd is insane, but they sound perfect, and they seem like they're having the best time. It's not going through the motions. And these dudes have to be in their sixties, no yeah. doubt. I mean, they they were like the follow up. They were supposed to be the next Sex Pistols, right? Mm-hmm. Like legitimately, they yep. were signed by Malcolm McLean. All the stuff um, that I would say. Incendiary at the Brooklyn Night Bazaar was one of the best shows I've seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. One of the three shows, and finally the last Foundation show. Yeah, right. It was that. It was impressive. Okay. So Tom reminded me of one. I'll close it with. Hit me. Me and my my brother Brett ran a store together in Asbury Park, vintage and handmade goods, natural habitat. And we would also have live bands play. Pedal played, and it was fucking amazing. She's so t- they're so talented. Great. And it was after EP before her first LP. And she has her second LP coming, coming out on Run for Cover pretty soon. Uh, pre-orders are up now, so get that. Uh, and it was amazing. I've I've actually never checked her out. I just I or that act out. Is it just her or is it a band? Uh it's I think her. it's mostly she, just her, right? She, I, I believe she's kind of the creative force behind all parts, okay. but she has a lot she has a band with her. And she I, was yeah. in Tiger Show? No. 
Oh no! no uh, sometimes, the, sometimes there's support acts from her. There's like supporting pieces that play with it. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, yeah. uh, well, I didn't know if she was in another band before this. Okay, Sorry. so uh, the only thing I know about pedal is that uh, it's the one of those bands in that world who maybe has not gone over as big as the others. I think they're starting to. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think, I think she is. Yeah. I think she's. I think, I think they're totally getting there. Yeah. Uh, okay. I. Uh, Anything we've listened to this week that we want to give a shout out? Boy, I'm tired. <laughs> I listen to I literally listen to a bunch of stuff. Um, I listen to so much New Jersey trash music. So go for it. I, I listened to. I had to write it down because I was like, like, oh, like early '80s shit. Sadistic sex. Great t- band. Tale of Two Titties. Yep, you know great I mean? band. <laughs> uh, so you're talking about bands that probably don't early know how to '80s make a podcast mid-80s. work. So Sadistic never hear sex this. only did uh, some demos. Uh, I think they went on to a different band too. How did you know this? Because I'm the, a real. I'm a crate digger. That's, but like, how is is, that, are there that, crates for things like this? No, that, these are demos. But I know it. Amazing. That's wow. some New Jersey to the core. What are we talking? Right like 83, 84? Yeah. Yeah. Social like, Decay was another one that Social was Decay, That's a New Jersey one, yeah. Long Branch, Shore Style. Yeah. Um, they, yeah. Uh, start kind of more thrashy, dirty, and then evolve and do kind of like a little like a proto heavy hardcore seven inch called Life's Not Hard, You're Just Soft. And this is on eight ball productions. Um, eight ball productions. There's I so think, many things. Yeah, something like that. What, um, what era is this? 89. Oh, so it's later. Yeah. But they start at 85. Wow. Okay. So still, still around, still collecting punk and metal shit. So I also yeah. want to say Verbal Assault was, we were like, oh, the, the trial uh, album's being reissued. Re- 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 yeah. re- uh, yeah. And we all kind of were like, yeah, that's not a band that I've given a ton of attention. So I went and gave it a ton of attention. And there's an EP that falls before this that is like definitely hardcore dudes trying to be Fugazi, which is a very strange thing. Yes. This record has some real swizz on it mm-hmm. and is really, really good. I like yeah. this is some material that I really like I knew what verbal assault sounded like. Sure. But had I when, revisited I, when I thought about it, I was like, I don't know if I know a song. Right. And that's the way I feel about sure. it. Sure. But it is worth revisiting. It really is. This is when this reissue comes out, people should pick it up. And who's putting it that Brian? Right? This Atomic, Atomic yes. Action. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Uh, and the last thing I want to give a shout out to is the band Husbandry. Uh, I know that name. This is a Brooklyn band. Oh, that's why. That's, that's why. That sounds, it's like, it used to sound like post-hardcore in the way that I'm familiar with, like maybe some Jawbox-esque stuff, but, okay. w- but with big female vocals. Okay. Big. Uh, now they've gone full Faith No More, which doesn't, what? I, do, I mean, doesn't interest me at all. But. My favorite band. They do it, they are so good at what they do. That I was like, I can't deny this, even though this is not me. Well, I have to check this out. And I asked, uh, I asked their vocalist to come in on a drug church record. Sure. And she may have killed it too much. Wow. Like, wow. like we might have to like bit bury her. Cru- like, we might wow. have to bit crush her and like do a, like a whole bunch, uh, like distort her last couple. Th- just because it's like too good, maybe. And wow. like, and you know how I feel about good vocalists, but Not like I should have known she's a hyper talent. That talent, yeah. yeah. Uh, anything you want to share? Um, I haven't really listened to much all this right, week. That's it's fair. Been, that's fine too. It's been a week. That's fine too. I had a bunch, but it's all it's late. Oh okay. uh, wait, 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 wait. There was one. Uh, it's gone. All right, it's late. All right, uh, everybody. Uh, rate and review. Right, that's what we're supposed to give tell us people. those five stars. Yep. Our email is. Axe to Grind Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can at us. Uh, also, shout out to everybody that I, I didn't think that there would be significant crossover, but a lot of people went and checked out the Wrestling Cinema Fuck podcast yeah. that yes. I do be, because of the shout out. So if you haven't checked that out and you like just me gibbering, uh, that's a place that I gibber a lot. How long do you spend time on that Hulk Hogan movie where the guy's throwing the dog into the water? Oh my God. I felt like I lived it. Is, did you ever see that? No. <laughs> <laughs> what movie we'll, is we'll show you. Yeah, we'll show you. Out there. Uh, Wait, and, and for clarity, Patrick, are you a wrestling fan? Not at all. That's what I've had to tell people, and they that's so funny. don't understand it. Like, why? But would I you said dedicate? that's part of the dynamic. So. Yeah, I mean that's the gimmick. Fair. Yes. Right. So it's not Morgata. Uh, it's corporate. And corporate Patrick. At Axe to Grind Cast yes. on, on Twitter. Twitter. Yes. Follow us on Facebook. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.